Microphone check one, two. What's good? What's good? I'm always back live in the mix Sunday morning. Jay Watts, ser sermon, you know, sermon while you're earning. That's what I call it. The sermon while you're earning right now. Got to get my levels right before you guys come walking up in here and make sure I can hear myself okay. Hopefully you guys are out there Sunday morning making a little money. Um, we were all out last night driving. I drove till about four or five in the morning. Took me a quick nap. You know, got up. I was about to go grab me something to eat. I said, you know what? Let me take a look at some videos. So I finally got a chance to look at a couple of videos I've been meaning to look at. You know, I've been driving my ass off. So I had to take a look at some videos. Let me scoot that back real quick because I now I can hear better. Yeah, because it was all in my ear. So I had to take a couple of look at some videos and I I kind of got an earful. Shit was kind of funny. Shit was kind of funny because, you know, my man, you know, Pedro, he was he was going to do a live today. So I'll discuss that a little bit. And, you know, my man Dash and Trader, you know, those both of my St. Louis brothers or whatever. We might not see eye to eye on a lot of shit. And that's cool. That's just how life goes like that. Life goes. But it, it was kind of funny. What up, Dig Bar? Oh, man. It ain't, it ain't really been raining that much in Arizona. It's, it's been kind of sprinkling a little bit, but not really raining that much. So that's been kind of good. Because if it was raining too hard, you know me. I'm parking the car. I'm not going out there, man. What up, BMW Pilot? Good morning, my man. Hey, it's only 1045 in the morning out here in Arizona. So, you know, I'll probably do a live for about an hour, two hours. Go take me a nap, sleep, probably get up and do some more driving. Who knows? I'll figure it out. But yeah, I, I just wanted to kind of, <laughs> this is so funny. I love it though, because to me, it's it's people actually starting to be real, honestly. The gig economy, what up, LW YouTube, Flagstaff. Oh, I know you guys have got some good weather up there right now. Loving it. I'm going to have to come up there and go snowboard, man. I used to snowboard a lot back in the day. I was actually on a snowboarding team. Believe that shit. Sierra Snow Gliders. But I was looking at some videos and people starting to try to, you know, they're trying to be real. I feel them. They're trying to be real. I see how they're trying to do. But I'm. they know me. Y'all know me, man. Since y'all can look at all my old videos from back in the day, y'all know how I roll. You know what I'm saying? When I get down, I keep it live with everybody. So if I don't pay attention to the comments for a second, you know, forgive me or whatever. Hey, hey, what's up, Jenny? Hey, finally, you get to be on with a live. That's what's up. That's what's up. Oh, this is going to be a good live today. Trust me. This is going to be a funny live. Y'all going to love this shit. Trust me. But anyways, so everybody knows, you know, Pedro, he kind of threw a shout out the other day to a bunch of people. I was listed at number four for whatever reason. They listed me as number four. What up all praises, my man? Hey, man. Hey, go back. <laughs> what do you say? He said, hey, I'm stopping in to say hello. I need I still need more sleep. I read your comments just now. Going to make another comment video addressing the truth. They got your back, Jay. Oh, you're going to like this, Brian. You're going to like today. Trust me. You're going to like today. What's up, Taz? So, you know, Pedro, he kind of threw me in at number four. Don't know why, because all I did, I had an opinion about an issue about the glitch going around, the DoorDash glitch. I told you, I don't do DoorDash, nor do I know anybody who uses the glitch or whatever else. I just had a good opinion about it. So everybody saw my opinion, you know, Dash and Trader, Pedro, they all saw my opinion, and they kind of felt a certain way about it, which I'm cool with y'all did, because y'all y'all should feel a certain way, because it's a serious matter. It's a serious matter. And because... Just like my other opinion, I said, if you know there's a way to throw somebody a life jacket and to save somebody, wouldn't you give them that life jacket? I would throw them the life jacket because that's just how I am as a as a human. I would say, you know what, man? I kind of know something that might help you out. Check this shit out. That's just how I roll. Now, they don't roll like that. That though the DoorDash group don't roll like that. They're not like rideshare. You know, they they're not human centric. They're fucking hamburger centric and shit like that. They're not human centric. We're human centric. We feel people. You know, we ride with people every day in our back seats. We always roll with people. We talk to people. We deal with people. We pick up people. This is what we do. We do people. That's what we do. So when you're used to delivering hot dogs and hamburgers and shit, you lose that human connection. So you don't get to hear the stories about, you know, being evicted. You don't hear the stories about, you know, losing your car, not being able to pay your insurance, you know, your phone getting turned off. You lose that human connection. Rideshare brings humans together. And that's why I think we all think kind of differently than the DoorDash crew. So DoorDash, those guys, they, now for one, they're all saying there's nothing wrong with using the glitch. I agree with them. I've said that shit on many of my videos. Y'all can go check all my videos. Ain't nothing wrong with using a hack or a glitch. Just don't post that shit on my channel. That's all I say. Don't post it on my channel because I don't want the apps to see it and the apps to shut that shit down. Look at all my videos. That's my stance on it. Use the glitch all you want. Just don't post it on my channel because I don't want somebody who's benefiting from it 
to get it shut down. Once it's shut down, families that are feeding themselves lose that benefit. That's my stance on it. They kind of feel bitter about the shit because they had the glitch. Them and all the little fucking people walking around, ain't nothing wrong with the glitch. It's cool if it's cool if we use the glitch. Ain't nothing wrong with it. And everybody in their comments, it's cool if everybody used the glitch. Ain't nothing wrong with the glitch. I'm like, cool, knock yourself the fuck out if you want to use it. But to sit up there and say, ain't nothing wrong with using it and to hold it from people you know that need it, that's the part that fucked me up right there. You're saying there's nothing wrong with using it. Ain't no big deal. It ain't nothing, no thing. But I'm going to hold this from people that need it to keep themselves from getting evicted. They need that extra $100 to pay for that car repair. They need that extra $80 to pay for their phone. You hold that shit from those people. But you're saying ain't nothing wrong with using a glitch. It's cool. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Everybody uses a glitch. Cool. Then why don't you help out your fucking people? Because your people support your fucking channel. Your people flying around the country, driving around the country to these raggedy ass motherfucking conventions you throwing. 300,000 subs, 60 motherfucking people. You could have told them at the convention, this is a little glitch you guys can use when you go back. You ain't got to post that shit on your channel. You ain't even got to email it to them. You had them at the convention. Hey, y'all, y'all can take this back to your little circles. Since you paid for my convention, take this back. This is a little glitch that we do on DoorDash. Help they ass the fuck out. But you'd rather watch motherfuckers drown so you look great, like you sitting on a motherfucking throne. So instead of you saying, hey, this is what we've been doing. We really a bunch of fucking hacks. We ain't really as good as we say we are because this is the hack that we use. But it's cool to use the hack. Don't worry about it. It's cool. If you can deal with the consequences of using a hack, potentially getting caught, knock yourself the fuck out, but feed your family. This is the hack. This is how we do it. But a lot of motherfuckers going to sit up there and say that my opinion is not valid because I feel that if I knew something about the apps, like a lot of us know about the apps, a lot of us know shit about the apps. We know how to keep surges. We know how to find surges. We know how to use double apps to do shit. We know that. We know that shit. So we share that with each other in emails. I dropped a vid. Well, I'm about to drop a video showing how I did two things, two things I did that drivers on my channel emailed me and told me how to do. And I did it in the video and it worked. And I said, hey, y'all, this shit fucking works, man. This is what I'm talking about. And on one of them, I actually showed me going through the process of contacting Uber about it. The, the driver told me, contact the Uber about it. Thanks, brother. I appreciate that. What up, Mr. Flex? Yeah. And the, the driver on my channel told me, how to actually do it. Man, chill out. Chill out, Brian, man. We don't do that on my channel, man. Do that somewhere else, bro. We we over here about to have a legit conversation. We ain't been to fight in the comments, man. Real shit. But this driver told me how to do something. And he said, when this happens, Jeff, this is what you do. I did it. It worked. It worked way too fucking good. Way too good. And I was like, I need to let the community know this shit. And it's 100% legit. There is. It's sort of like a hack, but not really a hack. But I think the community should know about it because if the community sees it in my video and they say that's how these motherfuckers are getting money, I didn't even know, but I did it. And I got way more than what I thought I was going to get. The motherfucker told me how to keep a surge because y'all know I do reservations, how to keep my surge when I'm doing a reservation. So I said, that's impossible. He said, do it. Trust me. I did it. The surge. The surge didn't stick when I did the reservation, so I had to follow his steps. He said, contact Uber, tell him this, send him the screenshot, do all this. Sh I did everything. I said, I need the $4, the $4. I said, I need the four fucking dollars of surge that I should have got that I didn't get. Uber support said, give us two minutes. It was a $20 ride, should have came out to $24. I need my four fucking dollars. This motherfucker said, we just adjusted your account for that. Okay, I opened my account. She was $33.95. They gave me an $18.95 fucking surge. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck did you just tell me to do, dog? Whatever you told me to do gave me almost five times the amount of money I was supposed to get. I don't know if I was talking to an AI or who the fuck I was talking to, but whatever that driver told me to do, I did exactly what he told me to do, and I got five times the amount of money I was supposed to get. And I'm like, thank you, brother. I even told him in the comments today, thank you, brother. I appreciate that. That's how ride share drivers help out ride share drivers. We share shit to help each other. I mean, we got regular drivers helping out content creators. Because of this dude, not I didn't just get zero. 
I got 18 extra dollars, not zero. He gave me 18 extra dollars on a fucking ride that I got zero on because I listened to him. This is how ride share communicates and talks to each other. But you got these motherfuckers over there, you know, 2,000 people suffering, 5,000 people suffering, 10,000 people suffering, 20,000 people suffering. And this motherfucker, oh, I didn't want to tell nobody because I promised my friend. Wait a minute. So you got one motherfucker who's your friend. One motherfucker who's your friend. I promised my friend I wasn't going to share it. Fuck your friend. Because I'm looking at people being evicted. I'm looking at people losing their cars, not being able to fix their cars. I'm looking at people not having enough money to put in their gas tank. That's who I'm thinking about. And I'm going to tell my friend, listen, I know you told me not to tell nobody, but we got a lot of motherfuckers suffering on my channel, dog. So it could be horrible between me and you, but I'm going to explain why I'm going to tell a few of these people about it because a few of these people really need to help. And if my friend says, if you help them people, then we ain't friends no more. Fuck that motherfucker. He's not my friend no more. Because that's one against 10,000 motherfuckers that probably need my help. I'll lose that one, but I'm going to help that 10,000. That's how I roll, though. We're different. Oh, 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 hold on for a second. Yeah, yeah, BMW Pie. That's what it is, man. That's what it is. What up, y'all? What's up? What's up? Yeah, I'm just kind of explaining the situation right now. But see, that's me. I would help out, you know, a thousand people before one of my friends who said, Oh, ain't nothing wrong with the glitch. It's cool, man. It's, it's okay. Everybody's saying it's okay. Everybody said, ain't nothing wrong with it. Everybody can use it. It's cool. It ain't no big deal. It ain't no problem. It's just this. You're just doing this. You're just forcing to stop. It ain't no big deal. If it ain't no big deal, then why don't all these fucking people know? You know why these people don't know? I said it in my opinion video why these people don't know. Because it's selling an illusion that they're using other apps to do what they're creating. If they tell the glitch, then everybody knows the sponsorship revenue is, is sold. It's all bullshit. They know it's all bullshit because the glitch is what's really making the money, not the fucking, not the apps like Solo One Power and all that. So everybody who's sponsored by Solo One Power that knows about the glitch will not tell their constituents about the glitch. No matter if these motherfuckers are drowning in debt, losing their cars, about to get evicted, can't pay child care, they cannot tell nobody about it because they don't have the fucking heart to. Because, oh, I told my friend I wasn't going to tell nobody. Fuck your friend. When you got 100,000 people, 60,000 people, 40,000 people, 20,000 people subscribing, your fucking channel supporting you. Buying your shit supporting you. Downloading your shit supporting you. Coming to your conferences supporting you. And you can't get these motherfuckers a free hack that's completely right in their fucking phone. And everybody is saying, well, ain't nothing wrong with using it. It's just doing this. It ain't no big deal. If it ain't no big deal, then why didn't everybody fucking know about it? That's my whole problem right there. I can't tell you who was using it, who wasn't using it. But I will tell you, if it's no fucking problem and it's okay to use for everybody, then why didn't more people know? Oh, we can't tell everybody. Why not? Because these motherfuckers are show boosting your channel. They're helping you out. They're subscribing you. they pass your videos. They come to your conference. they buying your shit. they downloading your fucking shit. But yet you can't help a motherfucker that's drowning. You can't help a, a motherfucker that's drowning. You can't throw somebody a life jacket. And I would have saved all this for Pedro's channel. But let me check. Let me tell you about this shit. I was going to come on, go on Pedro's channel at first. I really was. I even told these motherfuckers I was going to go on the channel. But I found out what was going on. So I watched Dash and Trader shit. Dash Trader's like, motherfucker, we this, we that. We the kings of the industry, motherfucker. You don't tell us what to do. You don't tell us what to do. Y'all little, y'all don't tell us what to do. We the cool kids. We the... And that right there, it's not that it struck me, but it, it let me know these arrogant hot dog delivering motherfuckers really think they somebody. They really think they fucking somebody. Here we are, grown ass motherfucking men with kids. Some of us got grandkids, got families and shit. We done bought houses. We done got, and you got the nerve to tell us that y'all the kings of fucking the goddamn gig economy because y'all dropping off hot dogs to a motherfucker. For real? For real, like, think about it. We're the king of gig content creators because we drop off fucking hot dogs. Get the fuck out of here, man. Come on. Then Pedro got the nerve to sit the fuck up there on one of his videos, and he had the gig conference telling these motherfuckers, oh, y'all ain't got no question for me? You got Bentley here. This is Bentley. You've got Pedro here. You don't got nothing for us? And I'm sitting there like, who the fuck y'all supposed to be? Y'all don't even door dash in fucking Denver. But yet when you got a motherfucker saying he can make $2,000 in any market because he don't have to know the market, that tells you something. He knows something nobody else knows. Oh, I can make two Gs in any market. Doesn't matter the market. 
That means because you if you ask me, Jeff, can you make this much money in Rocher in any city? I'll tell you no, because I don't know how that city operates. Even in my own fucking city, y'all saw me do a video driving around scouting my own city during fucking Super Bowl so I can figure out what the fuck was going on. That's my city I'm scouting, trying to figure shit out. But yet you got a motherfucker sitting there going, oh man, I don't even need to know nothing about the city. I just make two G's just showing the fuck up off the plane. I'm two G's in this shit. You can only say that at a level of arrogance if you have something nobody else has. They glitch. The fucking glitch. And I'm sitting there like, why would somebody say that? I mean, just blatantly put that shit in everybody's fucking face. I can make two G's in any city I want to go to. It don't make a difference. I'm like that. And then to sit up there and act like, what pissed me the fuck off even most, act like this motherfucker got the nerve to summon, summon grown fucking men to his live on Sunday. Y'all got to come to my live on Sunday. If you don't come to my live, you're a coward. If you don't come to my live, you guys can't say anything on your channels anymore. Who the fuck are you? I don't know you like that motherfucker. I don't know you. Even Dash and Trader say it on his own channel. We talk about what we want to talk about. And I'm like, exactly, Dash. I agree with you, Dash and Trader, on that shit. Motherfuckers talk about what they want to talk about. So who the fuck's going to sit on their channel talking about, oh, I'll summon y'all to my channel on Sunday. One, two, three, four. Number four being Uber GFAZ. Come or you're cowards. You can't talk about shit on your channel unless you come sit in my court. Fucking King Pedro, motherfucker. I know King Edward, King James, King fucking Richard, Queen Elizabeth. I ain't never heard no motherfucking King Pedro. That shit's new to me. That shit's kind of new to me right there. I missed that shit in history class. Who the fuck is King Pedro? Man, I appreciate that shit, Flex. Appreciate it, man. But it's like, how are you going to sit and tell me that I can't have an opinion, an opinion on my own fucking channel unless I come to your fucking channel on Sunday at the time you tell me? Motherfucker, I can have a goddamn bar mitzvah on Sunday for all you fucking know. I could be going to some Jewish ass bar mitzvah. I could be going to a fucking King Sierra and shit with my Mexican friends. You don't fucking know me like that to tell me come to my live on Sunday or else you can't talk about this ever again. You've got to stop it. Who the fuck are you? I don't know you. You don't know none of these fucking content creators out there to be telling them what you could do is tell all the people you know in your DoorDash circle, y'all need to come get on my live Sunday or else stop doing DoorDash or whatever the fuck you want to tell them. That's your crew. That's your people right there. You don't call grown motherfuckers who own their houses and shit telling us, I don't give a fuck what you're doing on Sunday. Come on my motherfucking live or else you a coward. You can't talk about shit. Motherfucker, for one thing, you ain't even monetized. Let's keep that fucking 100. You ain't monetized no more. You got to build your monetization back. You got to apply later. I'm monetized over here. I don't know what Dash and Trader makes on his channel with 10,000 subs a month. I don't know. But on my channel with 5,000, I'm making about a grand a month almost. So if you got 10,000, I hope you're making $2,000 a month with your channel, Dash and Trader, because you got twice the amount of subs I got, and I'm only making $1,000 a month with my channel. I hope you're making 2,000 a month, because that's what's really real. Subs don't mean shit after 1,000. Once you hit 1,000, you in the game, baby. Back in the game, baby. Like that Dave Chappelle shit. So once you get 1,000 subs, you're in the fucking game. You're in. It don't make a difference if I got 5,000, 6,000, 3,000, 2,000, 1,000 and one motherfucker. It don't make a difference. What makes a difference is how your content runs. These motherfuckers are running me for a G a month damn near. I looked at my shit this morning. It was 830 something dollars of fucking channel value. How the fuck I do that? I don't even know. I'm not an expert at this shit, but I reach out and try to help motherfuckers. That's what I do. I say, well, this is what I'm kind of doing. I told people the kind of microphones I use. I told motherfuckers how I promote my channel. I told people even months ago, how did I make my channel seem more, you know, personal? I just be me. That's it. And somehow YouTube is like, motherfucker, we'll pay you a G a month to talk about this shit. And I only got 5,000 subs. So I hope you making 2,000 a month with your 10,000 subs. Because if you not, you need to work on your shit before you tell me, Jeff, you need to work on your shit. Motherfucker, you work on your shit. I'm at a G. You better be at two G's. Otherwise, you can't say shit to me. And that's me. I'm your homeboy, motherfucker. I'm your brother telling you that shit. I could talk to family like that. So you want to come at me say, oh, work on your shit. Your subs too low. Man, fuck these subs, man. It's not about subs. 
people sub so they can get notified and they can get on and they can comment in channels and shit like that. That's why people subscribe because they want to see the shit. You don't get paid for subs. YouTube don't pay you for subs. Google don't pay you for subs. Understand what this shit is about if this is what it's about. So when you start understanding what YouTube is about, you can come at me about some YouTube shit with your motherfucking green screen. I don't need no fucking green screen. Motherfucker, this is my house. That's my T-shirt printer back there. This is where I make my T-shirts. That's my motherfucking Southwest Airline when I'm ready to take the fuck off. Need a vacation, motherfucker? Like, shit. I don't need no motherfucking green screen. I keep it 100. Got my motherfucking juice. I got my goddamn equipment so I can fix my shirts. I don't need no green screen, motherfucker. I keep it 100. Curtains behind me. It's a window behind there. That's my front yard with my truck and my Jeep out in the front. I keep it 100. I don't need no fucking green screen. So don't tell me, Jeff, you need to work on your shit, man. You need to work on your shit. Motherfucker, I live my shit. I don't got to work on nothing. I live this shit. When you live this shit and you keep it 100, motherfuckers feel you. So when you motherfuckers were sitting on that glitch in your goddamn pocket and you see all these motherfuckers suffering, not having gas, getting cars repo, getting evicted, and the whole time y'all saying, well, ain't nothing wrong with the glitch. We could use the glitch. It ain't nothing wrong with it. It's just doing this. It ain't no big deal. If it ain't no big deal, then give it to all these motherfuckers that subscribe your channel. Help these fucking people out. That's what I was talking about. I don't give a fuck who using it. All you motherfuckers knew about it. And for all yourself to sit there and kiss y'all raggedy ass and sit there and smile in y'all motherfucking face and click like on your shit and y'all motherfuckers sat there and watched them sink. That's fucking sick, dog. Like I said, don't come at me in no motherfucking video because I will come back. You talking about, oh, I hit, I hit hard. I hit, motherfucker, I don't give a shit about that. You have no idea who the fuck I am, what I've been through. Motherfucker, I've been riding motorcycles for 25 years in five different states with fucking Hells Angels, all motherfuckers, and I ain't never joined no club. I walked in any motherfucking bar I want with my bike parked out front. Key still in that motherfucker, and I left on it. That's how we roll in the bike community. We don't need no group of motherfuckers around us. When you respect somebody, you respect them. When I park my bike and give everybody respect, they respect me back. When I buy a motherfucker shot, they buy me a shot back. That's called biker love right there. 25 years deep in this shit. Ride anywhere with anybody with my vest. My vest has my two sons' names on it. Everybody else's vest has club names on it. I walk in the spot with my son's name on my vest. Who you rock with, Jeff? You see these two fucking kids on my back? That's who I rock with. Motherfuckers ain't never said two words to me about that shit. Well, you need to get out of this bar, or you need to do this. Or you know, Motherfuckers ain't never said shit to me. They're like, respect, dog, respect. And that's how you do it. So all this hitting hard, fucking delivering hot dogs and hamburgers and motherfucking chicken salads, making you a fucking king. You ain't never walked in no motherfucking biker bar full of Hell's Angels, asked a motherfucker for directions and got the directions. You ain't never did that. Tell me you have. You haven't. You ain't never been backwoods motherfucking Missouri, walking into a goddamn restaurant, sit down. Everybody give you respect. The last time they saw a black motherfucker was 10 years ago. But we hung out like fucking family in that motherfucker. Tell me you did that. But yet, you out here fucking arguing over motherfuckers not giving you $3. You ain't tip me $3, dog. You ain't tip me that $3, dog. You fuck around, get punched in the mouth by the wrong motherfucker. But yet, that's what you built your channel on, that shit. That shit is what you built your channel on. And you telling me to work on my shit. My shit's real, dog. I don't need to work on nothing. I just wake the fuck up, record my screen, and go. I don't got to work on shit. If motherfuckers can't feel me, I done told these motherfuckers, if you don't like my shit, see you. Bye. Because I'm real like that. I don't need all these motherfucking subs. I need real people around me. I've said so many fucking times. I love having a small channel because I relate to everybody. I talk to everybody. I know these motherfuckers, what city they in, what cars they drive, how they fucking drive. I love having a small channel. Because even with a small channel, I'm bet I'm fucking outballing your shit. And that's not me bragging about it. That's YouTube doing that shit. You talk to YouTube about why your shit ain't doing like mine. I don't fucking know. You can't even ask me. I can't even explain it. I can't explain it. But yet for Pedro to sit up there and, and list me as number four. Now you have people actually accusing him by name, accusing y'all by videos, putting videos up and everything else. Then y'all threw me in the shit because I have an opinion. I even had an opinion about the dude that was posting the fucking videos. Thomas, what did I tell Thomas? I told Thomas I wouldn't be posting that shit online because it might get you deactivated. I wouldn't post that glitch online. I tell people behind the scenes so they don't close that patch, Thomas. I told Thomas that. I said, why don't you email people that glitch so everybody can use it and everybody can make money off of what they've been making money off of. I told Thomas that. 
So before you say I play sides, I don't play sides. I play logic because I check y'all on the shit and I check Thomas on the shit. But everybody's going to do what they want to do. But everybody knows where the fuck I stand. And that's all that really mattered to me. Motherfuckers knew where I stood. So to try to tell me, oh, you need to come on my channel to speak or else you can't speak. Motherfucker, this ain't court Pedro. You can't fucking tell a grown motherfucker not to speak. I can talk on my channel about the shit and get paid for it. I talk about it on your shit. I don't get paid. My subs can't even comment on your channel until they sub your fucking channel because you got it set up to where people have to sub your channel just to comment. Then on top of that, you can edit the video. You can delete it at any time you want to because it's run through your channel. I have no control over that. So if I'm giving you my content that's valuable, YouTube values me. They don't value you. You're demonetized. YouTube throws commercials on my shit. They don't throw nothing on your shit. You're demonetized. I told people in my videos, I do not follow motherfuckers that I don't want to be like. I do not want to be demonetized. I don't want to be deactivated. I don't want to be broke. That's it. So I tell people all the fucking time, watch who you follow, watch who you listen to, because you will end up just like those motherfuckers in the long run. You will. What up, Trader? I was just talking about you, man. Man. But I tell people, Dash, man, like I said, we we gonna always be brothers, man. We we talk like family. And motherfuckers think I don't respect Trader. We talk like family. I've had physical fist fights with my motherfucking little sister and my brothers, like biologicals. And we still love each other and stand for each other this day. A lot of people don't understand the passion we have for being who we are as humans. And sometimes you and your family might get face to face. But guess what? If anybody stepped to Dash, motherfuckers got to step to me, too. If somebody swung on Dash at motherfucking White Castle, I'm jumping out the fucking car and me and Dash are about to whoop somebody's ass. That's how it is. But I can say shit about Dash. That's my fucking brother. He say shit about me. If he say shit about me, he stand on that shit. He ain't got to retract this shit. He stand on that. I respect that. I stand on what I say. And that's just how we all roll, man. What up, novice? What's up, James? Yeah, that's right, man. Just, hey, cut out the middle, man, man. Cut out the middle, man. And I tell, and, and like I said, I was going to actually do Pedro's live today. But I thought about it. I said, wait a minute. Who does he think he is in the gig? I mean, he would never summon Tony Zoo. He would never summon Dara. He would never summon Sergio from the Raja. This motherfucker would never summon anybody. Who the fuck do you think you are to summon me on fucking Sunday out of all days? Like, dude, is, is this fucking church for you or something? You telling us you better get on my channel. You got to get if you don't get on my channel. Like, no, you approach that whole situation wrong, dog. You approach that whole situation wrong. Because you could have said, I have an open invite to anybody wanting to present any evidence. And the thing is, I put a comment on Pedro's channel. When he said that shit, I put a comment on his channel. I made my comment. Some people liked it, but I had to go up under my own comment and I had to put the link to the video that Pedro was talking about because Pedro was like, just very opinionated, has a lot to say. So I said, yeah, if they want to know what I said. Here's my video. I put the link in there. You know what that motherfucker did? He deleted that link. He deleted the fucking link. Why would you take out the link of information so anybody can go look at it and say, what the fuck was Uber GPAZ talking about to get Pedro to list him as number four? What the fuck was he talking about? So I put the link right there. I stand by mine. Here's the link. All your people. I put that shit for your people. Go look at it. That's what I said at my last live. What Pedro do? Deleted the fucking link. And I'm like, you know what? That shit ain't cool. Because if you really want these people to know what I said, send them to my channel so they can hear it from my fucking mouth, not from yours. Because I said it loud on my live. I didn't say it quiet. I said it live on my live. I gave a whole fucking three, four hours of fucking live about the shit. And I stood on everything I said. Both sides of the fucking equation. I even said, if you motherfuckers slander, if y'all slander fucking Pedro, Pedro can sue your motherfucking ass and take your house, put a lien on your house, fucking have a lien on your wages. I said that shit in the video. I said, if y'all slander Pedro, like y'all motherfuckers saying some shit that ain't true and y'all putting all these videos out, these videos can be downloaded and he can fucking still have copies of all these videos when you slander him. I said that in my video. That was my opinion on everything. I stood on both sides of the equation and analyzed the shit, broke the shit down. But I got listed as number four who had to be summoned the fucking Pedro court. Like, motherfucker, I'm not going to fucking Pedro court. And I'm sitting there like, what'd you say? I think YouTube's new update got rid of video links because I now have to put them in my description. 
I saw it there though. I put that shit in there and I saw it because I put it and people put links in my videos. I don't know how they do it, but they put it in there because I always putting YouTube links in mine and I click on them all. Maybe he has it blocked to where you can't do it. I don't know. But I was like, man, he's got to set up a line where I can take a few callers. Yeah, I know it, man. I got to do something like that. I will. At some point I will. But somebody said, that's the trade is your real brother. I didn't know that. <laughs> He might as well fucking be shit. We look alike. That motherfucker looked just like my little brother, Rusty. Rusty live in North County, I think, still. He was down in the city for a minute. I think he back up in North County. Dash will look just like that motherfucker. <laughs> One day we'll put a picture of Rusty online. They're going to be like, is that Dash and Trader? Shit, you not. That motherfucker look like my little brother. But no, on the real, though, man, on the real. You know, you don't, you don't do that to people in front of an audience that you think you've captivated to be like, I summon these people to my court. If these people do not show up at my court, these people are now labeled cowards and therefore cannot speak on their channels about any of this. They have to drop this. I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? Who does he think he is? I'm like, Pedro, dude, slow down, slow down. You just dropped off two motherfucking hamburgers. You probably sniffed the relish. Don't sniff the fucking relish, dog. You're getting high off that shit. You're getting high off the fucking relish. Stop sniffing that shit. Deliver it. Drop it off. Get back to the car. Get some fresh air. Because the shit you just said don't make no fucking sense to a real dude. It don't. And I'm sitting there like, this motherfucker literally told four grown fucking men to give up our Sunday and do what he says. And even Dash and Trader said, you don't tell people what to fucking do. Motherfuckers do what they want to do. I'm like, yeah, exactly. I'm like, Dash, and man, I saw that shit. I was like, Dash and even get it. He's you don't tell motherfuckers what to say or do on their channel. And I'm like, Dash, talk to your boy, man. Talk to your boy. <laughs> I'm like, and it's the thing, man. Motherfucker getting hopped the fucking relish, man. Fucking Pedro Court. Yeah, and see, that's the thing. Once you get a video on your channel that's on nobody, you can delete the motherfucker, edit it, do whatever you want to do, quiet it down, fuzz it up, say it got jacked up, it got corrupted, we had to get rid of it, or say, oh, well, my sponsors didn't like this section, so I had to take that section out. You can do whatever you want with a video. UberGeetAZ at gmail.com. That's my email. But see, once you have control of a video, you're right. People control the narrative. People can take the video and be like, hey, I can do whatever I want to do. And if I was to take a section of that video out, check this shit out. If I was to take a section of the video, even the section I was on and put it on my channel, he could hit me with a copyright flag at any fucking point in time. Any point in time, he can hit me with a copyright flag. Be like, you know what? That shit came off my channel. Looks like it's getting some pretty good views. He's up to like, you know, 1,300 views on that motherfucker in the past couple of months. Let me copyright that shit. And now all of a sudden, He's sharing in the revenue from a video that was on his channel that he didn't share in the revenue. And I could potentially get a copyright strike against my channel and end up in the same fucking boat. Like I said, you don't follow people who you potentially don't want to end up in the same boat as. You don't do that. It's just not logical. So if you follow somebody that's doing something, most likely you're going to end up on the other side with a fucking roar. Both of y'all oaring like this together. Y'all rolling like a motherfucker. He's like, I got an oar, you got an oar. We in the same fucking boat, motherfucker. Yeah, exactly. Dude. He said, when did Biden appoint him as a judge? Yeah, that, that fucked me up. That really threw me right there. Because I ain't never, ever heard of somebody saying, if you are not present in fucking Pedro court, you cannot do this. You cannot say this. You cannot post this. You cannot do this. And you're a fucking coward on top of that. I'm like, is this fucking you? What the fuck happened to YouTube, man? What happened to YouTube? What happened to social media? What happened to fucking people, man? What happened to people? Because I'm real. I would never do that shit to people. The thing is, Pedro has access to all the videos that were either made about him or anybody else. He could clip that shit just like they clip shit, put that shit on this channel, let them talk, and then say, these are my receipts against all the bullshit these motherfuckers are talking. These are my receipts against the bullshit they talking. And he can just lay it right there on his own fucking channel. He don't need nobody there. I'm like, so to summon grown ass fucking men out of the woodwork, like we motherfucking demons from the soil and shit, come up, motherfuckers, I summon you bitches, whatever. We ain't going no motherfucking live. I, saw, I sat thought about this. I was like, wait a fucking minute. I ain't never seen a motherfucker summon some, like, try to summon like Sarah Elizabeth. Summon motherfucking, you know, Bentley. Summon Nug, summon all these motherfuckers of your channel on Sunday during your live. See what happens. See what happens. And tell them, if they don't come to your live, they all fucking cowards. They all y'all cowards. If y'all don't come to the live and support me. Y'all need to be on the fucking screen with me. All y'all cowards if y'all don't come. 
And I'm like, if you, since they're the ones being accused of everything, but all the videos that are going out, wouldn't they be the ones that would be sitting on a panel, either defending themselves or not? That's what I would think. I'm like, why would you have somebody like me who just has a fucking opinion, left and right? I go left and I go right on the shit. I tell motherfuckers if the glitch was okay and everybody was cool to use it, it ain't no big motherfucking deal. I think 30,000 people should have been feeding their fucking families the right way. If it ain't no big deal, 30,000 motherfuckers should have been feeding their family with that glitch. I know already there's glitches in roster that people use. There's glitches in delivery people use, and we share them in back doors. We don't talk about the shit in public, but when I see a motherfucker, I'll be like, hey, man, I heard you talking about that problem. This is how you fix that problem. Motherfuckers hit me up in my email all the time. Thank you, Aaron, brother. I love you, brother. Love you, my man. And I tell people, man, if, if I got something that I think can keep you paying your child care, like I put fucking repair videos on my fucking channel. I tear my cars and shit up. Do I know if I can put them back together? Motherfucker saw me do a, a repair recently on the Beamer. I ain't never owned no motherfucking 2019. Everything I'm doing to that Beamer is brand new to me, but I'm willing to rip this motherfucker up for the calls. I'll take the front brakes off, take the rear brakes off, fucking adjust the e-brake, put a new motherfucking belt on. All that shit is new to me for that car, and it's all a new process. People have seen me fuck up. People have seen me do spark plugs, stop halfway through the fucking spark plug job on the video. I stopped halfway through the job and said, I got the wrong shit. Be right back. I showed myself at motherfucking O'Reilly buying the right shit, getting back, because that's my first time working on it. I'm going to keep it real. I'm going to keep it 100. And if motherfuckers say, dude, you don't even know what the fuck you're doing, I'll say, you're right. But I did it anyways, huh? I didn't know what I was doing when I put a supercharger on my fucking Jeep. I've never put a supercharger on a Wrangler. But you look at my supercharger video. It shows me going to Home Depot, buying steel. I got a magic marker. I'm marking all my shit. I'm doing fitment. You see me spray painting shit. I ain't never did that shit before. If I'd have tore that fucking Jeep up, guess what? It's mine to tear up. But I keep it 100. I tell motherfuckers right in the video, I ain't never did this shit before, but it's mine. And I show people how to do it. And people sit there and go, oh, man, this motherfucker right here, he's willing to take a risk for the community. He's willing to fuck up a goddamn 2019 BMW halfway through the fucking job. Got to close the fucking hood and go to the store to pick up some shit because he had all the wrong shit for it. He's willing to do that to a car just to benefit us and tell us exactly how to do it. So I've never walked up on any video and said, I'm perfect. You can trust everything I'm doing is by the book. No. We both learn as we go. As I'm doing the repairs to some of my shit, we're learning as we go. As I'm doing my ride share videos, we're learning as we go. I do shit, make mistakes, kick myself in the ass, cuss the fucking apps out, cuss the passengers out, cuss myself out. Y'all seen that shit go down. I've never said I'm the best at this. I could do this shit. He said, Brisbane, I said, speaking of glitches, late schedule rides, man. I take scheduled rides to the airport starting at probably three in the morning, all the way up to like five thirty, six, seven o'clock in the morning. There's a four hour window. I got a video coming out showing the three scheduled rides I did in a row back to back three scheduled rides. I went about maybe 11 miles total with three scheduled rides. Now, I think it was 19. I think I calculated 19. I got to look at the video, but I ended up making $90 in 19. Everything was close. Everything was right there by the airport. But I show that shit to people to give people the information to say, hey, if you short $90 on a fucking bill, take them early morning fucking airport appointments. Wake your motherfucking ass up. Set your alarm clock. You take them. Because if I don't take them, you can have them. Y'all see me in my fucking videos getting rid of fucking appointments. Y'all see me go, man, I'm so fucking pissed off. Man, fuck these appointments. Fuck these. And I'll get out of them. And all of them were good. I'm like, don't want that one at 345. Don't want that one at 430. Don't want that one at 5. All of them. Y'all seen me do that because I'm somebody who's willing, willing to help people. I'm not going to sit there and harbor. I tell motherfuckers all the time, ain't no secrets in ride share. How many videos have I said that shit in? What's up? See, ain't no secrets in ride share. What's up, Michael? I'm a demon and a coward. When can you play my summons? <laughs> yeah. But I'm sitting there like I tell people in all my videos, all my lives, ain't no secrets in ride share. If you know something that can help your fucking fellow guy right there from getting evicted from his apartment, he's $175 short. You say, this is what you do tomorrow. This is how you get that $175. Tell your wife to be cool. Tell your kids they ain't got to pack up their motherfucking bedroom. Y'all going to be good, man. I just gave you some info. 
Oh man, I need $30, man. I ain't got shit on me. Start your motherfucking car up. This is what you do. Go out and do this. Sit here. Do this. Ain't no secrets in ride share when it comes to fucking not having your kids box up, box up their fucking clothes and their toys and shit. Ain't no secrets in ride share. Ain't no one fucking friend I'm trying to protect and letting 2,000 motherfuckers suffer. I'm going to tell my friend straight up, I appreciate you telling me that. I really do appreciate you telling me that. But I know some hurting motherfuckers right now. Man, you got to just let them hurt, dog. You got to let them hurt. Fuck that shit, Jeff, man. Don't tell them. I told you, don't tell them, people, man. Let them motherfuckers hurt. I'm like, you know what? You a rotten motherfucker. And you probably ain't, shouldn't even be cool with me, man. You shouldn't. Because if you coming at me telling me to let 2,000 motherfuckers hurt, me and you don't see life out of eye. We don't see life out of eye. Because I wouldn't let you hurt if you was in that 2,000, not even knowing who the fuck you are. And if that shit was okay to use and everybody was like, oh, it's okay to use. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Everybody do glitching. It's cool. Ain't nothing wrong with it. It's just doing this. Then give it the fuck out. Why harbor that shit? And I tell you why they harbored that shit. Because my opinion on harboring that shit was because how can you sell other things and get sponsored by other companies if you're not doing those things to get the money you're getting? Because there's no other way to explain it. Because if I'm doing all of that shit, getting money, not doing whatever it is with this glitch shit, not doing nothing with that, then I'll tell people, you can use the glitch all you want, but it ain't going to fucking help. So like, here's the glitch. You can try it. It ain't going to fucking help. Because I actually do all these apps, and these apps actually help. But everybody's using these apps, and it ain't fucking helping. Motherfuckers have been using Paro, Solo, Skeddy, all these fucking apps, and ain't none of them helping. So I sit there, and I tell people, yeah, is this one friend, Risher or Kasha Shari? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Who knows, man? Yep, Kevin, man, them early morning airport runs, dude, they pay good, man. And it's no track. Airport completely fucking empty sometimes. Man, Michael Rainey, man, I, I tell people all the time. Thank you, Miss Cheeto. Cheeto 510, I appreciate that. For real, for real, I appreciate that. Like I said, I'm up early in the morning. I drove last night. I'm up early in the fucking morning. Like, man, I should be asleep right now. But I just had to get this. Out because I, I was laying in bed and I watched a couple of channels and uh, a couple of channels videos, and I was like, you know what? I think this is a good time, a really good time for me to speak about it because it's not it's not something that you know the community needs to sit on and harbor on. These are real actual conversations of actual drivers, content creators, drivers, whatever you want to call us. It's okay. We can have this discussion. And I said this discussion should have been had the first day everybody was talking about this shit. I just watched. I was sitting online looking and I'm seeing all these people posting all this shit about all these content creators. And I'm like, ain't none of these motherfuckers speaking back. I'm like, they're tagging these people fucking doing all. I'm like, ain't nobody speaking back on it. What the fuck is going on? And I know Dash and Trader said, well, we don't have to speak on it. We y'all can say whatever y'all want to say. We ain't got to speak on it. Cool. But I'm gonna tell you right now, if a motherfucker was posting online, that I just gave up fucking, you know, full custodial rights, parental rights to my kid, and I'm a deadbeat dad and all this fucking shit. You don't think I'm going to say, my kid is right here. What the fuck are you talking about? My, What do you mean? Here's the court documents. Here's this. Whatever you need to see, motherfucker. Here's my kid. What are you talking about, motherfucker? I got receipts. What the fuck are you talking about? Because what was said about these people was a serious, serious matter. There's, like, like Pedro said, there's sponsors involved. There's families involved. There's integrity involved. There's a lot of shit involved just for somebody to sit around going, well, I ain't got to say shit about that. Because maybe those people were hoping, just hoping, that if they didn't say it on their channel, sponsors would never hear about it. Nobody would ever hear about it. But because people's names started getting tagged so fucking much, the shit was coming up in search engines all the time. Like I said, I would open up my fucking YouTube and I would just see the shit all over my home screen. I ain't never seen shit like that. I be seeing shit about cats, dogs, DoorDash, Lyft, Uber, snakes. I don't even like snakes. Is he still on snakes? Lately, it's been a whole bunch of shit just about Glitchgate. And I'm like, ain't nobody saying a fucking word about it except the people accusing people. The accused ain't saying a fucking word. And just like Dash Trader said, we don't, we don't got to speak on that. We don't got to talk about that. You're right. You don't. But sometimes silence is almost like compliance. Silence can be admittance. Because if somebody is saying some shit about you so egregious that it can affect your sponsorship, that it can affect your money, and you clearly know it can affect your sponsorships and affect your money, I would stand the fuck up and be like, they out they motherfucking mind. I don't know what the fuck they even talking about. Yeah, Pedro's going to do a video of it. And that's the thing, man. I'm not going to sit up there and, and 
see all this shit going on about me and not say a fucking word about it and just sit there and just watch this shit. No, I'm going to stand the fuck up because it's a lot of people involved in this shit. There's a lot of ramifications of the information that's put out. And all a motherfucker had to say was, I knew about it, but it was told to me once. I just fucking forgot about the shit. I use all my other apps. Let me show you how I use my other apps. But that wasn't even said because there was something deeper going on in the DoorDash community, something deeper going on because people were bragging about how much money they were making, bragging about how they can take over fucking territories. And that is where all the fucking guilt started hitting motherfuckers in the stomach when it was exposed that there was a glitch helping people. But it wasn't just helping everybody. I mean, everybody's like, oh, man, the glitch is cool. Everybody... It ain't no big deal. It's cool. Anybody don't nobody got to tell nobody. It's all good. It's all. It's just an easy little, you know, just move your little phone around like this. It's cool. Then why ain't everybody fucking knowing about it? Then if it's cool. Like I said, man, when when you sit and you think about the business of YouTube, the business of Google, the business of sponsorships and shit like that. I told motherfuckers from day one, I will never be sponsored on my channel. Never be sponsored on my channel. I can put that on every fuck. If a motherfucker called me today and said, Jeff, we'll sponsor you for a thousand dollars a month. I say, no, nah, because I'm a driver. I don't need that kind of fucking money because <clears throat> that's control money. I was sponsored by corporate America for almost 20 fucking years. I had to sit in the motherfucking desk every day doing what they told me to do, wearing what they told me to wear, coming when they told me to come, leaving when they told me to leave, not taking breaks, going to every meeting they told me to go to, running the same reports they told me to run. I was already sponsored already for like two decades of my fucking life. I'm finally free. I'm free. I don't have no corporate, no company, no fucking body on my phone saying, Jeff, you have to. And so for a motherfucker, just a content creator to get on my, get on a channel talking about some Jeff, you have to be on my live fucking Sunday. If you're not on my live, you don't show up at fucking court Pedro. I'm like, motherfucker, corporate paid me pretty well to tell me shit like that. You ain't paying me a fucking dime. Who are you? Like, corporate paid me real good to tell me what to fucking do. Pay me real. Jeff, that's your parking spot. And I will park my motherfucking car there every day. You can't park in any other spot. That's your spot. Cool. This is your office. You can't sit in no other motherfucking office. That's your office. That's your computer. That's your inbox. You can't sit in nobody else's office. Cool. I was sponsored like that. But then when the motherfucker come and tell me, you got to be in my shit Sunday on my lot. How much are you paying me? Nothing is because I said so. Who the fuck are you? Like, I'm, I'm missing something here. I'm missing something. It's like, I don't know where this fucking, like, all the people on this channel really believe this motherfucker is like the second coming to King Richard. And I mean, everybody, yeah, they got to be here. Yeah, I'm like, what the fuck? Y'all got pitchforks and burning broomsticks and shit in the front yard. Yeah, they got to be here. Yeah. I'm like. Okay, and this motherfucker sitting on the throne with a little hat on and shit. Yes, King Pedro has summoned these four motherfuckers to court. They better show up Sunday. Yeah, let's see them hang. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? And this whole fucking channel's looking like that. I'm looking at these motherfuckers like, are these people in their right mind? What the fuck is wrong with these people? Nobody on this channel said, Pedro, do you even know these fucking people? Why, why are you telling them to be on your live? You ain't even monetized. And you're probably talking about people that are monetized. So why wouldn't they do that shit on their own fucking channel and make Google pay them? Google will pay them for their shit. You ain't getting paid shit, Pedro. You like motherfucking, you like the back door of the fucking Goodwill right now. It's just free shit going in and out the back door. Motherfuckers just dropping off boxes of drawers and shit. Free shit. That's your channel, Pedro. It's the back door of fucking Goodwill right now. There ain't shit going through it. All them fucking views. All them motherfucking clicks. All them likes. All that shit. It don't mean shit. Backdoor of goodwill right now. Because you did some shit on your channel that put you at the back door of goodwill. Nobody put you there. Nobody put you there. You got to put that shit on yourself. And just like with this whole glitch gate shit, you knew about the motherfucker. I don't know if you use it or not. I can't say you use it. What up, Dave? I don't know if you use it or not. I never said you. I never said anybody use it. I said this little team at DoorDash, they knew about that motherfucker. They knew about it. And they watched motherfuckers suffer. Watch people suffer. Tell me I'm lying. Tell me I'm lying. Tell me these motherfuckers all didn't know about it. Of course, 
you get one motherfucker made a video recently. I didn't know about the DoorDash glitch. I just found out about it. I guess you got to do this to hit it. And this is how you do it. And this is like motherfucker culpable fucking denial, deniability. I didn't know. I was so deep in DoorDash and I was this. I had no idea. Nobody told me. Cool. If that's your stance on it, cool. But if motherfuckers find out that you dropped the video lying, if you are lying about it, then you did that shit to yourself. People are doing shit to themselves in this community, going around saying, well, that person exposed me. That person is doing this to me. That person is doing that to me. That's like me speeding down the highway at 180 miles an hour. I get stopped by a cop and I'm like, you're the reason why I'm getting a ticket, officer. If you weren't here, I wouldn't be getting a fucking ticket. You gave me a ticket. Like, no, motherfucker, you were going like 180 miles an hour. Doesn't make a difference. You're the reason why I'm getting this fucking ticket, officer. <laughs> it's like, no, you can't blame somebody else for your fucking egregious goddamn actions. If you do some shit and it's legit and you know it's legit and you don't care if it's legit, then you wouldn't have a problem admitting it's legit. Well, I thought it was legit. Exactly, 140 in a Tesla. Like, if I did some shit in my backyard like planting a tree. Let's say I planted this certain tree in my backyard in Arizona, not knowing the laws in Arizona about certain fucking trees, maybe. I planted this tree. Completely, you know, whatever. Plant. They come, Jeff, you can't plant a fucking persimmons tree in your fucking backyard or whatever. Okay, you can only do oranges and apples in Arizona because that shit attracts certain bugs that ain't native there. Cool, I know it now. Thanks. I innocently did it. Now I know it. But if somebody per specifically tells me, you can't plant persimmons tree in this yard, and I go, you know what? I can plant it, but I just got to keep it hidden from people. Now I'm doing that shit to myself when fucking the state of Arizona shows up at my house going, we're going to find you. Why are you finding me for planting that tree? Well, yeah, exactly. Well, shit, you knew something was wrong with what you were doing. You did it anyways. Try to conceal it. And then got the nerve to turn around and go, but it's OK, though. It's nothing wrong with it. It's OK. It's totally OK. You can't do that shit. You can't turn around in one breath, say it's totally OK. But the whole time you were concealing it. You got to make up your fucking mind. You got to make up your mind. Either it was okay or it wasn't. That's what it is. Yeah. So who did it? Sorry, but is Pedro I drive too much nowadays? Watch your videos, bro. <laughs> That's the thing. Nobody knows who was doing it. That's what Sunday was supposed to be about, about people presenting like truth and facts and data that they got and screenshots of shit they got and text messages they had. That's what they were supposed to be presenting. I don't see how I got to be number four on that list. All I had was an opinion. I dropped a live with an opinion based on all the shit I was seeing online. And all of a sudden, I'm the fourth coward in this motherfucker. I'm coward number four. I'm like, so I can't just have an opinion and just speak on my channel about some shit that I see on the internet? Now I got to answer to some fucking body in court? I got to, you can't say anything until Sunday. Your court date is Sunday. You come to court, and after court, you can't say anything. Oh, okay, motherfucker, whatever, whatever. Yeah, Kevin, you're right. There's a difference between summoning and requesting. And it's like, but to call someone a coward for not answering the summons is cowardly. Dirty Bronco, you're a real one. Need more people like you. Thank you, brother. But I'm going to tell you, just like that shit that happened last year when everybody was like, yeah, if you drive during our strike, you a motherfucking coward. You spineless. You ain't worth shit if you drive during the strike. And I was like, wait a fuck, because I was telling people to drive during the strike. And I was making videos about driving during a strike, making money because it was a busy part of the year. Video drops, motherfucker calling me a spineless coward. So I dropped a video about that motherfucker. And I think y'all know who I'm talking about. Motherfucker, the professor, y'all know who I'm talking about. Let's not be stupid. Y'all know I'm talking about the professor because he did that shit. And I don't see why motherfuckers in rideshare think they became gods because they logging miles on a fucking car or gods because they dropped off a hot dog to fucking Sarah and Jessica. Sarah and Jessica ordered a hot dog, motherfucker, that does not make you a god. It makes you a hot dog delivery person. So understand what we do in the community. We are beneficial to the community because I pick people up and I take them somewhere. Sometimes I pick up fucking meth heads. Sometimes I pick up people who are homeless and got all they shit in the bag and I'm dropping them off at a hotel. But that's what I do. I'm not a god. I'm transport. That's what I am. But I'm transport with a fucking brain. I can think for myself. I can do for myself. I don't need a motherfucker telling me, well, you got to do this or you a coward. If you drive, you're a coward. And I was like, why the fuck would you put that shit on somebody saying, because we want to make money, stack money for the slow periods. And if we don't follow your lead of not working during a busy period, 
we're cowards. That shit fucked me up right there. Because there's a lot of people in Russia who are forgetting who the fuck they are. They think a little funky fucking YouTube channel, a couple of motherfuckers to be like, oh man, you got 30,000 subs, 40,000 subs, 60,000 subs, 80,000 subs. It cracks me the fuck up. Because to keep it 100, like I told motherfuckers, I'm a percentages person. I'm a percentages person. So when you have over 350,000 motherfuckers aggregate on all your channels and 60 fucking people show up, that's a percentage. A percentage that you can perceive that these motherfuckers don't trust you or don't like you. One of the two. I don't know. But not only that, another percentage is if you got 60,000 subs, 80,000 subs, and you've got only 1,200 views on a fucking video, I get 1,200 views on a video, motherfucker, I only got 5,000 subs. Some of our videos got 3,000 views. I'm over 50% rate. Over 50, If I got 5,000 subs and 3,000 views, I'm over 50% rate. How can you have 60,000 fucking subs and 2,000 views, 3,000 views? That's what I get at 5,000. What the fuck are you talking about? When you want to be the god of a community or a leader of a community, you got to lead, motherfucker. When you see shit circulating around the internet, you got to step the fuck up. You can't run. This is about your app, DoorDash, the app everybody fucking runs to. The app everybody ran to. The app you sponsor, you support. The app you push. And motherfuckers are saying shit about it. And you're like, I ain't gonna say nothing. I ain't gonna say nothing, but I don't wanna say nothing. I ain't gonna... Wait a fucking minute. Hold up. But it's not just saying something about it. These motherfuckers saying shit about you. They saying shit directly about you. So, I ain't gonna say nothing. I ain't saying nothing. I ain't gotta say shit. Motherfucker, ain't got shit to do with me. I ain't gonna... No. It's got a lot to do with you. Because when you push and you promote programs within a certain app, I tell motherfuckers all the time, fuck these ragged ass apps. Because I believe that shit. Fuck these ragged ass apps. Because I know how these motherfuckers are. They'll throttle me, kick me out, boot me, steal my fucking tips. I don't promote these motherfuckers. Y'all ain't never seen me ever on any video I ever did put my motherfucking registration link for Uber or Lyft on my shit. Fuck these ragged ass apps. Jeff, you can get $800 if you, if you fuck. Why do I want to invite a driver? to be just as pissed off as I am every day. Why do I want to invite a driver into some bullshit? It's like, hey, dude, you want to be on fire? Come drive over with me. We all in hell together now. Fuck that. So I'm not going to sit up there and invite motherfuckers into something I'm still working through. I'm still having issues with. If people join because they want to join, cool, but don't ever say, Jeff, because of you, I blew my motherfucking engine. You told me to do this, Jeff. I blew my engine. No, I ain't never told no motherfucker drive uber or lyft because i don't know how you maintain a car i don't know how you do shit but if you do it and you want to know how to do it okay watch my channel a little bit i'll show you some real shit i'll show you how i make decisions why i make decisions in the market i'm in the car i'm in the time of day i drive i'll show you how i do that shit you can probably transfer it to your time of day but i ain't never gonna send you a motherfucking link going hey join uber you fuck around and your ass would be like jeff i just blew a tie rod a motherfucking strut my motherfucking engine leaking my transmission's clanking all because I signed up with that funky motherfucking link you sent me. My car wasn't ready for that, Jeff. My car ain't maintained like that, Jeff. You done fucked my life up. Now that shit on me now. As a motherfucker promoting some shit in a situation that I don't know nothing about. I ain't never promoted these motherfucking apps. I have a hard time with them. Shit. <laughs> Big one. Thanks, Aaron, brother. I believe that, man. This is like you said. It's my business. How I run my business. No concern of yours. If I run it differently than you, why should you care? But don't complain when you aren't making money, and I am. Facts. Facts. And a lot of people don't understand how that is. When you're running your business and you're doing your business and you're doing well and you want to, you know, put it out there that you're doing very well and you want to influence people to do very well, give them the information you got so they can do like you do, if that's what you aim for. But if all you're aiming for is to put yourself on this motherfucking throne like you the judge with the cloak on sitting way up at the fucking top between all this fucking oak and wood and all these nice ass nameplates around you, fucking your honor Pedro shit. If that's what you want to do with your fucking life and everybody in the pews and everything is either fucking defendants or goddamn plaintiffs. If that's how you want to do your fucking life, then be like that. Say that shit. But don't pretend you a motherfucking driver every day in these fucking streets, every day in these streets, every day in these streets. Pretending you a fucking driver, telling people, do this. You don't drive enough to do that. You don't drive enough to do that. When you out there six hours, 32 trips, 34 trips in a day, when you do that, then you speak on that. 
You don't do four fucking trips and say, this is how you drive adequately. You did four fucking trips. You, do, you don't speak on that. You don't do shit for fucking fanfare. I'm going to show you guys how to dash in a city that I've never been in before. It's a waste of my motherfucking time. It's a waste of my fucking time. For entertainment value, sure. If I want to see somebody fuck off time and money, sure. But if we're here trying to stack money in our bank accounts and really get shit done, I want to put out content that a motherfucker can use. I don't give a fuck if they taking a shit, got ear pods on, saying, I need to listen to this and make sure I'm amped up for the fucking day. I need to get amped the fuck up, go out there. These apps are going to be fucking kicking my ass in this. I'm going to go park in the parking lot, give me one of these old rusty ass motherfucking donuts, and I'm going to get back out there and do this shit. I need videos like that. That's why my videos exist. These fucking gimmicks and shit. I talk about that shit in my last, like last year. All these motherfucking YouTubers, a bunch of gimmicks and shit. They always doing something stupid to get attention. They're entertainers. They're not influencers. They're entertainers. An influencer is somebody who influences you to do something. An entertainer is a clown that jumps out of a motherfucking car with eight other fucking clowns. And they do clown shit to make you go, ha, 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 ha. That's what clowns do. An influencer says, I'm going to improve your life. Because I know what it takes to improve your life because I've been where you've been and I'm going to give you the information I got to get you there. That's what an influencer does. A lot of influencers get called out for their fucking scams and their little sham deals and shit like that. A lot of influencers get called out. A lot of them get called out. We see it all the fucking time, so don't pretend we don't. Do not pretend we don't see this shit all the time. Motherfuckers running additional shit in the background because all they got is motherfuckers over here. They over here doing this to these people, letting these people see this shit, but they're on the back end doing some other shit. Hey, did you sell those motherfuckers those meal plans? Yeah, I sold them all those fucking meal plans. These motherfuckers all eating peanut butter and celery all fucking day every day. Oh, man, we got our peanut butter and celery sponsorships going through the roof. And these motherfuckers ain't getting no healthier. Eating fucking peanut butter and goddamn celery. My dogs eat that shit. They ain't healthy. But yet, that's what you do. You push and you promote shit. Here, here's Pedro now. Look at this shit. So people can have an ignorant viewpoint, make videos for hours, but can't come online for 15 minutes. I tag you on because you had an opinion that was based on lies. Wanted to get your thoughts. That's why I tag my video in your channel. So people can see that I already talked about that shit. I already spoke on it. But for some reason, that link is not in your comments no more. I saw Bud Soda's comment there, but I didn't see my comment there. Thanks always first. I appreciate that. I'm going to keep grinding, brother. I saw Bud Soda's comment, but I didn't see my comment because I put my link in there because I wanted people to know when you come to classroom, you already had the refresher course already. You've already saw why Pedro made the comment he made. You've watched my live. You know why Pedro made the comment he made. And so now you can come to the live aware of who I am, why I made the comment I made, and everything else. That's why I did that. But 15 minutes, man, I did like damn near a three, four hour fucking live. 15 minutes ain't enough time. This motherfucker's out here starving, man. This motherfucker's out here really going through some shit, losing shit. But when you lose touch with the fucking community, you lose touch with these motherfuckers. We pick these people up and we drop them off at hotels. We got kids and shit, snotty nose motherfucking kids sliding out the back seat, going to an apartment they about to sleep in. They don't even know the fucking people they finna go sleep in there with but they got kicked out of their house. And I got to go sleep in this apartment with some friends. And this kid don't even know these fucking people. We deal with real fucking life situations in this motherfucker. This ain't always about content. It ain't always about content. Some of this shit is about life. Yeah. And I tell people all the fucking time, we are every day going through, we're one decision away from being deactivated, losing our fucking car, losing our apartment, losing our house, losing our life. We're one fucking, I am not going to hold anything that I feel of value from somebody who I feel can use it. And if a motherfucker tells me, Jeff, I told you, man, don't tell nobody. I'm going to tell a motherfucker like this. I had to. If I'm going to save somebody, I'm going to save somebody. I'll do it in the back door. Like, hey, you know, I'm going to email you this shit, show you something, use that. Tell your friends, don't put that shit on my channel because I don't want that shit being shut down. But use that. I think I can help you. And that's what I have all the time happen. When people ask me questions, I, and if it's something that they want to know that's outside of the radar of shit, especially people who want to tell me about a glitch, I said, just shoot me an email, man. Shoot me an email. Don't put that shit on my channel. Shoot me an email. Let's discuss it. 
So the apps don't see and the apps don't shut that shit down. And that was my issue with Thomas posting that shit online. Because now everybody's like, oh man, it don't work, it don't work. You know how many people could have ate off that fucking shit? So many people could ate off that shit. Not taking no shitty motherfucking orders every day. Like I, one dude was in your comments. I was chatting with him in your comments, or maybe he was in my comments. I don't even fucking know. But he was talking about how, because how you made up that, that situation about steroids. Cool, we can use steroids as a situation. But the trick is, steroids is not about muscle strength. The steroids we're talking about is about how you can manipulate numbers. Imagine if every batter that came to the bat had that had steroids, every batter that had steroids that came up the bat, the pitcher would pitch him the ball, but the pitch never count. They would count it as a no throw every single time. They could do it 25 times in a row, throw the ball 25 times in a row. But because that guy had steroids, they would count it as a no throw. He just got thrown the ball 25 times. The whole crowd saw it thrown. The pitcher threw it. All the players threw it. The umpire saw it thrown. But it's counted as a no throw 25 times in a row. That's how the glitch works. Like people want to say, no, because if the hitter hits the ball, then I'm like, dude, it's not about hitting the fucking ball. It's about making things count or not count. And if you say this guy has steroids, do not count any ball that's thrown to him. It's a no throw. Everything's a no throw until he hits it. When he hits it, then it counts. But as he's never getting the ball. He's never getting the strike. He could swing if he wants to. He could not swing it. None of this shit counts. That's how the glitch works. And I tell people, when you have something like that, and it's a glitch, or it's a hack, or it's anything else, that can help a lot of fucking people who are flooded with these raggedy ass apps and these low motherfucking offers and these forced, frustrated ass fucking people saying, I'm never going to make it to the point where I can dash anytime. That's why I said, I don't even like DoorDash. I never downloaded DoorDash. No, man, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> That's funny shit. Leave Pedro alone with that shit. That's funny shit. He said, just swipe over. No. Yeah, but see, that's the thing. It's counted as a ball if the batter doesn't swing, regardless of whether or not the pitch is clear or strike or not. That's right, Kevin. That's the rules of baseball. But when you break the rules of baseball, like a glitch breaks the rules of a of an order being sent to you, it means the order was never sent, the ball was never thrown. I think you're missing it, Kevin. I don't know how I can explain it to you because I tried to explain it to you before. You're talking about actual rules of baseball. We're talking about glitches that defeat the rules. Once the rule is defeated, there is no rule. There is no, there's no ball ever thrown. They're throwing it and it's not ever thrown. Just like an order is sent to your phone, but it's never really sent. That's the part I'm thinking you're missing right there. You're sitting there thinking about a ball being thrown. But it's not about you being right or wrong. I mean, if you want to talk about baseball, we can talk about baseball, football, basketball, track, kickball, cricket. I don't give a fuck what we talk about. We can all talk about the rules. But if we're going to conceive the rules as being an equivalent of a glitch that's happening, then you got to understand that the rules are now non-existent. So you probably understand baseball and know baseball. Shit, I know baseball. Everything you said about baseball is true. It's the rules of baseball. But if you break the rules of baseball, then the rules of baseball don't exist. Just like the glitch broke the rules of DoorDash. All these orders were sent. They never really existed. They were never really sent. So we're sitting there seeing orders come to people's phone. People are so scared to decline an order because they're scared to get low. You know how many motherfuckers be in my comments talking about, well, if your, if your uh, app goes, if your uh, AR is too low, you get deactivated. Motherfuckers were so scared of that shit. I had to go to Uber Legal to pull legal documents to put in a fucking video saying, stop being so fucking scared. There was a lawsuit that happened. Lip Uber, none of these motherfuckers can deactivate you for low AR. They're offers. They're offering you a position. You don't have to accept the position that's an offer. But accepting positions that are shitty offers will earn you rights to be up in some upper tier of programs of bullshit they got going on. And that's where everybody wanted to be. Dash now, upper tier. That's where everybody wanted to be. So if people can't be up there, then what's the whole fucking point? The glitch helped people be up there. The glitch helped people get up there. Once you're up there because you're using a glitch, your bills are fucking paid now. You're right, Agger, man. You're right. That's right. It's true. Some of these gig apps actually footed the bills and expenses to have some of their gig to attend a gig con. Yeah, yeah. And see, that's the thing. When you can use this kind of app to get to an upper tier and now you're fucking smooth selling, you're getting the orders and everybody's getting the good shit. 
Not the shitty shit. The shit that's like, you know, $2.47 for eight miles. You ain't getting that shit. That's glitched out. $4 for 19 miles. That's glitched out. It never affects your AR. Your AR is going up the whole fucking time. All that shit's going. You're now in a program to where you get $11 for one mile. You got that. $22 for six miles. You got that. You cranking out 300, 400 a day instead of 125 a day on a whole bunch of shit orders. You know how many $3 orders you got to make? You know how many $3 orders you got to take to get to $120? You got to take 40 fucking orders to get $120 if all your orders are $3. 40. Pedro, it's cool, man. Like I said, man, you can, you can present all the evidence you want. The evidence you want is against what all these videos were posted about you about. That's what they were about. One thing you can't tell me, not one thing, is that you help out your community by making sure all these motherfuckers wasn't suffering no more. By saying, I shared a part of the app that a lot of people didn't know about and it got them into certain programs. If you can say that, but then again, even if you did do it, the sad part is you can't say it because if you say it, Solo, Para, a whole bunch of people you deal with, a whole bunch of people you deal with are going to look at you as, well, you've been lying to us because you told us you've been selling Solo and Para and all these other apps, but you're telling us now that you gave the glitch to all of these fucking people who are actually doing better numbers. You're in a hard fucking position, Pedro, a hard position, very hard position. And if it was up to me, honestly, what up, Gig Wise, my man Tim? I would have never put you in that position by posting any of this shit online. I would have found out what you were doing, saw how well you were doing it, and shared that shit with everybody I know that does DoorDash. That way, everybody was making 400 a day. Everybody was making 300 a day. To put you in that position didn't help the community none. It really didn't. I mean, it kind of exposed you for who everybody thinks you are. That, oh, he's shady, man. He's doing backdoor deals. He's doing this and he's doing that. But who does that really help, though? Calling you shady helps who? Saying you're shady. And, I mean, you had a very valuable tool in your fucking hand. You had a very valuable tool to your, at your disposal. Everybody could have used that fucking tool. Like people say, ain't nothing wrong with a glitch. Ain't nothing wrong with a hack. Ain't nothing wrong with that. And I agree with that shit. Even in my last video, ain't nothing wrong with that. You had a powerful tool in your hand. Calling you names doesn't help pay a fucking bill. Calling you names don't get a car off that fucking flatbed that's about to get repo. Calling you names don't get people good orders. Calling you names don't put nobody in a dash of programs that's out there. Calling you names is so fucking stupid. It does nothing for nobody. If motherfuckers want to help the community, you know what they're going to do? They're going to find a way to help the community. Now, you've you been had haters, man. You've been had haters for the longest fucking time. Ever since I've known you existed, you've had haters. I've seen them all over your fucking channel. Now, at one point, can anybody say, Jeff, you a Pedro hater? I don't hate Pedro because I think Pedro didn't do something that I would have did. That's, that's my opinion. It's my fucking opinion. If Pedro would have said, Jeff, you would have did the exact same thing in my position, I would have said, no, nah, I don't think so. I don't think so. I wouldn't have did the same thing in your position. I would have did something probably a little different if I because I'm doing different. I know things about certain apps, and I'm doing different. I'm helping people with it. People are helping me. We're drivers. We want to see each other succeed. We want to see each other win. I don't want to see a motherfucker sinking and be, excuse me, and be like, oh, dog, that sucks, man. They only made $125. Damn, that sucks, man. Man, I, I only made like $50 yesterday in like five hours. Damn, that sucks, man. I wouldn't want to tell people who supporting me and support my channel that shit. I wouldn't be like, this is what I do, dog. Check out my video. This is what I do. Look at this video. It shows you. I do a bunch of short trips. I kick a lot of shit out because other drivers need to get home with them long ass trips. Let those motherfuckers have those long trips and just keep fighting, fighting, fighting for dollars a mile. Keep doing that, man. Don't look for a dollar a mile. Don't look for minimum. Look for maximum. I stay in my driver's ass all the fucking time about how to make what we do better. And I do everything in my power to make sure every fucking kid got their own bed to sleep in tonight. Ain't packing up their motherfucking clothes to go live with their aunt because they losing their fucking apartment. If I can tell somebody, take short trips. Stop fucking with these long trips. You're burning time. You're burning gas. You're getting 50 cents a mile. If I can tell somebody that, I will tell them that. And they will start making $11 a mile, $22 a mile, $6 a mile, $4 a mile. They'll be like, Jeff, 
I ain't never made three hundred dollars a day. What the fuck? I ain't, I've been driving this shit. But I ain't never made three hundred a day. I heard motherfuckers say I ain't never made four hundred in a day. Never made three fifty in a day. This is crazy, dude. I just made two hundred fifty dollars in like five hours, Jeff. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah, that's how it worked. We help each other out. We don't watch each other drown. Ride share is different. We're people, people. We deal with people every day. Need that. <laughs> Sully, you nuts. Need that money so you're kicking that french fries. That motherfucker said, Dad, could you send me a dollar? You raggedy motherfucker. You just hit me up for a dollar in the middle of me working and doing shit. You hit me up with a fucking, can I, I'm trying to get these french fries. I said, oh man, I saw your message too late, man. I saw it too late. You probably gone by now. That motherfucker said, I'm actually right back at the same play. I'm like, you motherfucker, you did not go back and get them dusty ass fucking french fries. That dude, he's nuts. He's fucking nuts, man. Man. Yeah, exactly. It says you pay for bots while working for Lyft to pay off your bots. This is just pure sand. <laughs> exactly. That shit's crazy, man. That shit's crazy. Man. Yeah, it says if any driver said they don't use the glitch screen, shot, screenshot your message on DoorDash that you missed the order. That will prove everything. That's right. That's right. And that's why I believe it, man. Yeah, Kevin. I agree with you, Kevin. I'm telling a gig tuber does a video explaining how to do it. And it dr because now the apps know. Now the apps know our play. That's why I tell everybody in all my videos do not post glitches on my channel. Don't put that shit in the comments. Don't do that. Thank you, TS Glizzy. I appreciate that. TSG Tezzy. Always in the building. Thank you. Real recognize real. And Kevin, I agree with you, man. And, and see, that's the thing. It says DoorDash knew about the glitch. But this is the thing. DoorDash knew about the glitch. They knew it existed, but they thought it was so covert. For them to openly, openly admit now that they know about it and everybody knows about it, it's, it's now fraud now. So DoorDash has to shut it. DoorDash was forced to shut it. If DoorDash knew about it in the beginning and it was okay for everybody to use and nobody was having a problem with it, nobody would get deactivated from it. It was totally cool. It was fine. It was just doing this and this then everybody should have fucking had it. I agree with you, Kev. Everybody should have had it. And we should not have posted it to the point that forced DoorDash's hand to shut it down. A lot of people could eat off that shit. That was good information. I don't give a fuck what y'all say about that glitch. It was good information. I, hey, Tim, a lot of people says that. Mr. Gambit, Sermon Times, bless your crusty donut seat now. <laughs> That's funny shit. Said, bless you and crusty donuts for real. Yeah. And that's the thing is this pauses to play. DoorDash is all about location. And I tell people, you know, there's nothing I feel wrong with because these apps fuck us all the time. They stealing our tips. They playing us with throttling and glitching and all this crazy shit. They do a lot of crazy shit to us. These programmers are not on the up and up. These employees are not on the up and up. We know that shit. These motherfuckers are not all honorable people. They're not. So we're involved in a battle every day. They want as much money from the customers they can get, but we want as much money from the customers we can get. The customer just wants a fair price. That's it. The customer's like, I'm caught in the middle of this fucking battle. I just want a fair price. And we like, we want a fair price for you, but they're going to overcharge you so you don't tip us or you do tip us and they take the shit. No matter what happens, the driver's going to get fucked somehow. So a motherfucker says, there's a glitch out. That's a lifeline. That's a lifeline right there. And that's where my position has always been. Why didn't people who knew about it throw a lifeline to all these motherfuckers suffering? We sitting there watching all these people struggle, fail, lose cars, have to rent a car, have to give up rental cars, bank deposits going upside down and shit, negative bank balance. We seen all this shit going down, all this shit going down. It was like the house was on fucking fire and everybody was acting like it wasn't. And I'm looking around like, why isn't anybody? And once I found out about it, I was like, why didn't anybody help people? Like, did we just not want to? What was the deal with that? And like you said, just like Pedro said, there's Pedro's channel. The reason why it is set up the way it's set up, it's not a true driver's channel. It's Pedro's channel. It's not a DoorDash channel. It's Pedro's channel. Pedro has a lot of businesses going through that channel. He has a lot going through because he has a bigger audience. And 
when Pedro, if he would have played it smart, in my opinion, if he would have played it smart, everybody that went to, to the gig con would have got the glitch. I would have gave it to him. I would have been helping out anybody who was struggling. I would have came up with some way to say, if you're struggling, email me. And I would have gave somebody some assistance somehow. I don't know how, but it's been, even for ride share, it's been rough. It's been rough for ride share. This week, I made $26 on Lyft. $26. The shit, you'll see when a video comes. I made $26 motherfucking dollars on Lyft this week. $26. I don't think I'm going to clear a G this week unless I drive hard as a motherfucker today. It's been that fucking rough. But when you see people help, like I said, when motherfuckers was helping me, when people was helping me keep my fucking surges, when they were helping me with the reservations and shit like that, people were helping me. Drivers were seeing me struggle because they see my, my driving shit. They see exactly what I'm doing on my videos every time I post a video. And they critique my shit. They go, Jeff, this is where you're slipping. Jeff, this is where you fucked up. Jeff, you could do better right here. Jeff, this is what... I listen to that shit. And because I'm listening to it, I'm making more money. Listen to the drivers out there who are in the fucking streets driving. These motherfuckers don't glitch and hack. They don't glitch and hack. They just know that there are things you can do to make sure that you can lock in what your what your money should be and you won't lose money. They know shit like that. And that's how you help each other out. That's how you help people out. What the Jason said, my proof is that he didn't dash when he said he did. I'll prove it tonight. It's on my channel, 100% proof. Okay, Jaded Driver. See, that's the thing, Jaded Driver. That if if Pedro wanted to list somebody as number four, they could have listed you as number four. I mean, you got the fucking proof. You're the person that he should be sitting across the table from in Pedro court going, hey, here's your proof. And Pedro can say, well, that's not actually proof because that's not my motherfucker. And that's the thing. Oh, he did. <laughs> he did call you out. Oh, oh, okay. He did call you out. What up, Troy? Oh, shit. My bad. Is it explain the way you would throw the lifeline to everyone without door dash catching wind of it? Kevin T, there's a thing called Patreon. Patreon has people paying to be in there. And it's only members. That's it. Only members. You can even make a video that's only for certain members. Only certain members. If you say join my channel, you can share a video with only the people who paid to join your channel. All the free subs don't see the video. Only the people that join. Do you really think DoorDash is going to pay to join Pedro's channel or pay to be in Pedro's Patreon just to spy on him? No, no, he's not. They don't do that to him. There were ways to do it. I mean, anybody can do it. You can use a Patreon account. You could use like Discord. There's a lot you can do. You can Discord, but it's only like approved members only shit like that. And you can have somebody try to get in the group. And you can say, hey, message me and tell me who you are. I'm such and such on your channel. Oh, okay, cool. There's ways to get secrets out there, get things around without apps knowing about it. Apps are not new. Apps have been around for decades now, decades. So people have ways to get information to people without the app creators or the app engineers knowing about it. There's ways to do it. I mean, they do this shit all the time because the people that play like PlayStation and they play motherfucking Call of Duty, they play NBA 2K, they play um, Fortnite, they all got glitches and hacks in them games. My son be doing that shit. You can sit there and do it with a keyboard. And guess what? When they catch you doing it in the game, if you're in a tournament or something like that, yeah, they'll boot you out of the tournament. Probably close your account for like a day. But people do those, these little glats and these, these little glitches and hacks, and they email and text each other. Hey, if you press this key and that key at the same time while you're standing right here, you'll kill everybody in the room. Okay. They'll text each other that shit. And next thing you know, everybody's dead in the room. <laughs> Because they know your marketing. Don't be afraid to think outside the box. Frank, you right. You right. You right, brother. Josh Joyner said, okay, I know. See, Gig Wise Tim said that. Hey, Dirty Bronco, I appreciate that, man. I don't think I'm going to go to the top. I think basically the drivers on this channel know one thing. Like I tell, I just put a video out showing how I pushed my channel outside of the United States. So all you guys in the comments with channels, in there, you guys are outside of the United States. All your information, all your advice, all the shit y'all comment about is outside of the United States now. When I'm pushing for this channel, I'm pushing every fucking body, not just me. Half the time, I don't even say my motherfucking name in these damn videos. Somebody could be playing a video and have no idea it's Uber G Baze because I don't say that shit in every video. Sometimes I just start talking and shit. 
Because when I push this channel out, I push this shit out to everybody out there in this world who's ready to quit their fucking job, need like something to bridge the gap for a minute. Oh, I just fucking do ride share for a minute. I'll do delivery for a minute. I'm just going to bridge the gap. They might fall in love with the shit. They might not. But they're going to have enough to know within this. Like my man, Juan Vargas, he just started four or five months ago in a Tesla. Four or five months ago. This motherfucker, man, he makes so much. And all he does is short. He said, dude, I started watching your channel and all I do is short trips. I catch him all the time in Tempe. He's either behind me, in front of me, across me all the time. This motherfucker will bang out a $400, $500 night just out of thin air because he don't stop. He don't. These channels, all the advice from you guys. Thanks, Dirty Bronco. I appreciate that. And it's like all the advice from you guys is is disseminating to other people. All the numbers y'all throw in the comments. Hey, man, I got this today. I did, you know, $150 in three hours. Man, I just did a ride, you know, $96 for 40 miles. And it was this and that. Y'all putting the numbers in there and people see this and people read your comments and each person that comments, people find out who these people are. They go either sub your channel to see what you doing. That's why I tell everybody, if you have, if you have a YouTube name, at least, at least do one channel, do one video on your channel, at least one. And you can do them like how I do them. Andrew at your service does it like that. Uber Lyft Nick's Nick, he does it like that. And what they do, they just screen record. That's it. You just screen record. And you kind of, ex you could do this shit for five minutes. Just screen record something like you, you scouting for five minutes and what ride you found for five minutes. You put that video on your channel. No, I was your pastor in Mesa. Please remove my voice. You recorded without my knowledge. Ted Turner. <laughs> like Ted Turner. Like I have no idea who Ted Turner is. Yeah, but. Like people out there, you can record yourself for five minutes doing the app, five minutes. And after that, you could be like, you know what? I'm going to post that as a video. Somebody might see that and they'll go, okay, this is what I'll do. I'll sub this guy. Watch how he scouts. Watch how he chooses rides. Kind of follow his lead. I've seen five minutes of his video. Bet. Got it. And you just help somebody out. Well, report me to Lift Ted. I have no idea who the fuck you are. Email me at uberjeepaz at gmail.com. I have not. All you are a fucking screen name. Tell me some. I was your past. Motherfucker, you know how many people in Mesa I fucking picked up? I don't even know a motherfucker named Ted. Report me if you fucking want to. I don't know who the fuck you are. So you get on my channel talking shit. Prove who the fuck you are. Exactly. Fuck that motherfucker, man. Don't jump on my channel. I'm going to report you to Lyft. Take my voice up. I was your pastor in Mesa. Email me, motherfucker. Uberjeep. Uberjeepaz at gmail.com. Well, do it. Do it. Like, motherfucker, what? All oh, you motherfuckers record drivers. How many times y'all ragged ass record drivers? Y'all record drivers all the fucking time. Now, oh, fuck him. Fuck him, Lisa. I don't know that motherfucker. Fuck him. He can do whatever you want to do. And I hope that motherfucker do. Because all these goddamn passengers walking around record motherfucking drivers, we could be, you know what, since you guys put me on TikTok, you put my name on TikTok, you got to fucking, I'm going to report to your job that you recorded my voice. Man, fuck these raggedy motherfuckers. I don't know that mother, Muslim, I was your passenger in Mesa. Like, so? Motherfucker, I pick up a lot of people in Mesa. You could be some random motherfucker just lying, watching my videos lying. I don't give a fuck what you say. You got some shit to say, say it to me, motherfucker. Oh, Seth, you already missed it already, man. You missed You got to go back to the beginning of the video. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. Them awesome. I'm going uh, to report. Report me. Who gives a shit? What the fuck they going to say? Jeff, you recorded somebody's voice. Did I record their face? Did I record my voice? Did I record some music? I can record what the fuck I want to record in my car. It's my car, motherfucker. Just like y'all record drivers when y'all in the driver's car. You motherfuckers will record drivers in their car. And think y'all got the right to record us. So who the fuck are y'all? We can record who the fuck we want to drive. You picked me up last weekend, Sam. I'm going to report you to Uber for being greedy about tips and extorting people for tips. Knock yourself the fuck out. You can sit there and say, hey, he's extorting people for tips. Contact who I extorted. Ask him what I asked him. Show him some fucking proof. Is raggedy motherfuckers like you sitting around trying to get people like me kicked off of a fucking platform. Report Lyft all you fucking want. Because I make $26 a week with Lyft. Report those motherfuckers all you want. 
They have no idea who the fuck you are. I have no idea who the fuck you are. So you've got to prove who the fuck you are to everybody. And I mean stand in my fucking face and say who the fuck you are. Because I have no idea who your raggedy ass is. Probably some fucking troll on goddamn. Yeah, exactly. These raggedy mouth. Oh, I'm going to report you. I'm going to report you. Yeah. Exactly. That's the thing. They don't even get it. Let these motherfuckers think that. Let them think that. Let them think that. Oh, hell, you extorted me and my family for tips and now I can't get no lift ride. Oh, whatever, you raggedy motherfucker. It's somebody fucking around, man. He fucking around. This, this is somebody joking. Exactly, exactly. Gotta be somebody fucking joking. Because motherfuckers know me. When I give rides, shit. I ain't even gotta ask for tips. I ain't even gotta ask for tips, motherfucker. You have no idea how I drive. You've never been in my car. Never been in my car. Never had to ask for a fucking tip. Thank you, M. I appreciate that, M. Exactly. Lip is garbage. I mean, I had $26 with Lip last week. Fuck that motherfucker, man. Having to Omer report you. Report me, motherfucker. Like, what they gonna say? Jeff, you be recording video. Show me the video where I recorded him. And then call that motherfucker and see if that's who that is. There's some motherfucking hater somewhere. Show, show anything where I recorded you or whoever the fuck you are. He said, you, extorted, you extorted me and my family for that fake Rolex. <laughs> what the fuck ever? <laughs> no. Actually, I took this off of a homeless motherfucker. I traded him two crusty donuts for that bitch. He wanted the donuts that motherfucking bad. That's how I got this fucking watch. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Dude, I would laugh at somebody. If somebody did report me to Lip, Lip would probably start laughing. They would be like, I'm, I'm going to tell you how we know you lying. Jeff is the last motherfucker to ever ask anybody. I don't even contact customer support. I contact customer support like once a year. They go like, dude, Jeff don't give a fuck about these apps or nothing to do with them. He just drives. He makes his money. What he gets, he gets. If he thinks he's entitled to more, he'll call the fucking service line and say, hey, I should have got my $4 surge. That's it. So I'm the wrong fucking YouTuber, dog. I'm the wrong YouTuber. Said you got to actually find out how I drive, who I drive, where I drive, when I drive. You can go scout all them fucking videos if you want to. Knock yourself the fuck out. But all Lyft has to do is say, was that you? Yeah. Okay, we're going to contact that customer right now. And when it turns out not to be you, somebody's going to be like, who is this, Lyft? Jeff? Who's Jeff? Uh, he's a driver. You said that he had started you. I don't know who you're talking about. Well, this is the time we were given. You're the passenger that was on the actual app for that ride. And I have no idea what you're talking about. Must be somebody fucking with you. I don't even know a Jeff. I think I did ride in a BMW. I can't remember, but probably. Oh, wait, I did ride in an orange BMW. That's right. I gave him a $20 cash tip. He was cool as a motherfucker. That dude, hey, can I request him personally? You might fuck around and give me some rides out of that call, motherfucker. Go ahead. Knock yourself out. Call those motherfuckers. Call them. Like, try me. Try me. I'll be reporting back next week. Like, I don't know how Liv did it, but they gave me all these rides of people who, like, specifically request me now. This is some cool shit. It's like Lip called me saying all these people are now requesting me personally. That's what's up. Thank you, big.com, whoever the fuck you are. <laughs> no, exactly. Lip be like, what the fuck ever? Like, okay, cool. They're probably like, you know what? Jeff didn't even drive that day. He didn't even drive that time. Oh, well, there's a video right here on his channel says he drove that time and that day. Well, you're not the person, motherfucker. <laughs> Definitely, because we just called the person, and it's not you, because you didn't answer, you lying motherfucker. Like, dude, people can find out who these hacks are every fucking day. They find out who these little fucking hacks are. Nobody worried about this shit. What? This is receipts. What? Pedro isn't accused of not paying for... Those aren't receipts when you do or been playing the nap. Hey, Pedro isn't accused of not paying for a shopping pay at the grocery store. There aren't receipts when you do or don't manipulate the app. Oh, oh. This is Jeff. How many ride requests are you willing to decline to get the right ride? Bruh, all of them. You In some of my videos, you'll see. I will sit there for 20 fucking minutes, not taking nothing. <laughs> hey, all right, Aaron, man. Go over there and cook you some breakfast, brother, some lunch. It's probably lunchtime for you, man. Love you, brother. Be easy out there, but man. Be easy out there. No, but Dre, you will see me on some of my videos, man. I'll sit there for 15, 20 minutes. I won't take no shit. I won't. I don't get desperate. If it comes down to the point where I just got to turn the app off and come home, that's the point I get to. 
And I think the apps kind of know that about me, which is why they say Jeff will make 26 fucking dollars in a week driving for us. You know how many lift requests I decline? I mean, I'm I decline Lux rides because if Lux rides are not paying what they should pay, I'm not taking it. If it's a nature hike, not taking it. I'll decline four or five miles in a, or four or five rides in a row to all nature hikes and take something that's like two miles for like eight bucks. I'd rather do that than take a $46 ride, you know, $46 for like 42 miles. I can't do that. That's too far. I'll take two miles for $8 all day because I'll probably get one right behind it. Another two miles for another $8. And I just made $16 in four miles. <laughs> he said, I'm going to report you to live. You didn't take me to a multiple stop when it was mandatory. <laughs> he be fucking with Now he's fucking with me now. You know it, man. Shit. Hey, I, you probably the motherfucker I took to a stop. And you left your ID at the store, and we got we have to turn the fuck back around. You that motherfucker, big.com shit. KC Biz Strategist, I appreciate that. Thank you for the super chat. Super sticker, super chat, whatever they call them now. <laughs> what do you say? Will there be bench warrants issued for not showing up to Pedro court? <laughs> I don't know. You got to ask Pedro. He the one who put that shit out there. Tell them motherfuckers, you have to show up Sunday. And if you don't, you can no longer. We got a sentence and everything after that shit. He gave us a fucking verdict, a sentence, every fucking thing, all in one video. If you don't show up, your sentence and punishment will be you cannot speak about this, this, or this, and you can't do this, and you have to label yourself as a coward. I'm like, what the fuck? This is how many miles you drive from walking out the door to walking back in? I don't know, sometimes like a hundred. I could do a hundred. If you look in my videos, always first logistics. If you look in my videos, you can see I, I actually take pictures of my gas meter. My videos show pictures of my gas meter. It'll show it full. It'll show when I stop sometimes. It'll show sometimes. It'll show like when I start, it's like just below half a tank. Then it'll show me going to half a tank. So I make sure in my videos, I take pictures of my gas meter. A lot of drivers won't do that. And I, I even explain how my gas meter works in the car because I can use Eco. With Eco, my gas mileage starts going up because I'm using Eco. It's like 50, 60 miles a gallon. If I use regular comfort, it's more like 26 miles a gallon. Sport, I go down to about 11 or 12 miles a gallon. So I'm always on comfort or I'm on Eco. So it's like I try to show people what I did for the day in gas, like how much gas I used. And then I say, okay, this is how much money I made and this is how much gas I used. And it kind of helps. Remove my husband's voice, Jeff. I'm Kitty on the phone with Lyft, and I believe you were under the influence when you drove us. <laughs> Kitty Cat, you say, remove my husband's voice, Jeff. I'm on the phone with Lyft, and believe you were under the influence when you drove us. Record our... I wasn't under the influence, bitch. I'm on crack. You ain't watch my videos. I'm Dave Chappelle, bitch. I'm the one on crack all the time eating crack sandwiches. That's not under the influence. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> That's on crack. How you think I drive so good, motherfucker? <laughs> Uh oh man, that's funny shit. You said I was under the influence when I drove them. That's funny shit. That's funny shit. And you know what's funny is that if somebody really did say that I was under the influence, reported me as under the influence, I would subpoena the records, subpoena the records from Lyft, and I would have somebody sued for libel and slander. I would have a blood test taken. I would have a hair test taken. I have hair, shave on them or anything, have a hair test taken. Because hair traps in alcohol, drugs, weed, everything. Have a hair test taken. And when it comes back saying, this motherfucker ain't done drugs or drink in years, years. I want to put a lien on your motherfucking house, put a lien on your fucking paycheck. I'm going to have your ass and motherfuckers think, oh, Jeff, you say you care about people. You, you know, you don't want to see people homeless and this and that, man. Fuck these motherfuckers. I say that all the time. Fuck these people. Y'all heard me say that in video. Fuck these people. These motherfuckers in my chat right there. Fuck these people. Because I would sit there and be like, you know what? I'm going to sit up there and fucking sue they ass for everything they got. I'll have I'll have a motherfucking court record subpoena. I have you two going, oh, we can subpoena the fucking the, the uh, IP address where they came from. They weren't using a VPN. We know exactly who that user is. Cool. Well, let's get them then. Because if I got to get a court subpoena, then I can get all the records I want from shit. I can get send that shit to YouTube. I need to subpoena this person. Need their username, address, everything. <laughs> Pedro said, if we get you deactivated, we get $500. That's funny shit. That's funny shit. 
If you get that, you get five hundred dollars. Yeah, right. Pedro wouldn't say no shit like that. Defamation, baby, defamation. Yeah, no, I doubt it. Pedro would be like shit. Pedro would never. I, one thing about Pedro is he's he's probably a good comedian. He's really good at joking and shit like that. You said for real, for real. <laughs> And Pedro would probably not admit it. I didn't say that shit. They fucking with you, Jeff. Yeah, okay. Like I said, Pedro also don't talk about, you know, the glitch and stuff. There's a lot of secret hidden shit behind everything. So sometimes when you deal with people, you find out like covert operations. They're always running. I, I wouldn't think Pedro would do that. But you say he would do it. I don't think he would do it just because people just like to play games. And it's cool. Like y'all in my chat fucking with me about my watch and everything else like that. It's not even a fucking, it's not even a Rolex. I think it's a Gucci watch. It's like GC, guess couture, Gucci couture, some shit like that. <laughs> Pedro said, I didn't say that. <laughs> That's funny shit. But see, the thing is, I stand on everything I do every day I leave this house. I stand on everything I do. So I'm more like, hey, if anybody want to say some shit about me, hopefully you're right. Because I took the LSAT in 2010. Got accepted into 10 law schools, didn't get accepted into William S. Boyd in, in uh, Las Vegas at the time at UNLV, because at the time in 2010, UNLV, the William S. Boyd schools, that they're taking the top 150 scores in the state. That year, 3,000 of us took the LSAT. I was not in the top 150. I know law. I mean, when people ask me about law, there's a lot of things I know about law. Trust me. I, I got entire motions, counter motions documents i got affidavits i got stacks of shit from many times that i've done things in court and i've always left okay that's the thing this is what the rolex is fake man i bought too <laughs> no so can i have my money back i cannot tip you anymore for fake rolexes there's no protection for drivers from false reports plus try to figure out what ride out of 12 it was the liar man no she said, I'm reporting you because you didn't U-turn and pick me up. Now, you can report me for that always first. You know that shit. I know not U-turn for motherfuckers. I'd be like, nope. <laughs> he didn't U-turn that motherfucker. <laughs> That's one shit you can really report me for. Jeff don't make U-turns. That motherfucker, y'all see that shit. I'd be like, no. Kitty cat, like, I want that 500 bucks. No, nah, y'all fucking nuts for that shit. Y'all nuts. But no, on the real, though, you know, ride share, ride share is very different. It's very different than what, you know, delivery is. So at a certain point, because I believe as drivers, because we all deal with people all day so much and we go through so many emotions. We got people in our car crying, laughing, drunk, high as a fucking kite, fresh out of the hospital, on the way to the hospital, arguing with kids, loving on kids. We get so many emotions in our car in a day. We feel people. We really fucking feel people. And it, it puts humanity into a driver. And that's why I tell motherfuckers, it's hard to not be human. And, and do ride share. Some of these people, when they get in the car, they go, oh my God, you're the best ride share driver ever, man. This and that. I'm like, I'm just me, motherfucker. Dude, you so funny. You keep it real, man. You just do that, man. I wish I can like request you every time. And it's like, this is just how we are. And I'm sitting there telling people all the time that if you're not discussing things with your passengers, riding, laughing, having a good time, just being human. Not everybody wants to talk. Not everybody wants to talk. And sometimes you peep that. They're in their phone or something like that. Man. And I'm like, don't even say nothing to this person. Let's let them cruise. I'll play some Jesse Cook. All right, good adventure. Hey, I appreciate that, man. Thanks, Jay Watts, for calling out the fakers. I'm a vet and most lie about their numbers. And that's the thing, good adventure. We have, people don't understand. I'm an accountant. I have a bachelor's in accounting. My whole life, I've dealt with Deloitte & Touche, Arthur Anderson, KPMG, internal audit, external audit, so many different companies dealing with consolidated financials, CFOs, CEOs, treasurers. If you don't know how to fucking present numbers correctly the first time, nobody's going to believe you the second time. So the, the what you have to do is just give them what's exactly on the fucking screen because you can't change what's on. I can fucking manipulate screenshots all day. Is sex allowed in the Beamer for 20 bucks? <laughs> 25. No, I'm just kidding. But you can't manipulate shit once it's on your screen. You can manipulate a screenshot. You can like darken it out. You can move it over. You can like cut the date out. You can do so much with a fucking screenshot. But when you just recording your screen and you're going, you can't fucking fake that. You can't fake that. And you've got to go through the whole gamut 
of you selecting rides, going through rides, canceling rides, you know, declining rides. There's no way I can lie about the things in my videos. I can't say, yeah, man, I made like $300 in one day. This is what day are you talking about? This day? Jeff, you made $91 that day. What the fuck are you talking about? Oh, hold up, hold up, hold up. Wrong screenshot. Yeah, exactly. Wrong screenshot, motherfucker. It's like when it's on your screen, it's this the integrity of the number is trapped into a video. Screenshots are easy to fuck. I mean, people can manipulate them. They got photo editors, they got shops, they got so much shit going. You can make something go from like $13 for a ride to say, hey, instead of $13, can you put that as $43? And you can do it with a screenshot. So I can't do it. You say, hey, my name is Ross. You gave me a ride last week. You're making a drug deal with your cousin. <laughs> that wasn't my cousin. That was my brother. No, I'm just kidding. Shit. One ride share with one drunk parents, two young kids, New Year's Eve. Couldn't drive them home fast enough. Man, I'm telling you. That's how it is, Duato. That's how it is, man. We we deal with people all the time. And I tell folks, man, if if we try to fake our numbers as, as gig content creators, it's only going to be a matter of time before shit comes downhill. And once you fake that number, like I said, you got to show the right shit the first time because you may not get a second time. First impression could be a lasting impression. That's all people can remember about you is this motherfucker lied about what he made. I even, when I did that $3,600 in a week, I wrote that shit down on paper. I screenshot everything. I was moving my videos. I was showing people how I was driving and shit like that. Because I said, I got to keep this shit real. This is incredible. I will never do this again, ever, ever. Because we will never have two events that big in our city at the same time. We will never have that shit. That was an anomaly. And I rarely use that as a situation of how the economy here is in Phoenix because the economy is not like that in Phoenix. That was an anomaly. That won't happen again for drivers like me. Never. So when I show my numbers and how the economy really is, I show how I am Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night. I don't just show one good ass fucking ride, two good ass rides, a good weekend. Motherfuckers, see, y'all see me quit. Y'all see me quit on a ride. Like, you know what, man? Fuck this shit. I'm done, man. I'm, I'm out of here. This shit's fucking me up. This is pissing me off. Y'all seen me do that. And that's why I say ride share is a little bit different because. You don't see too many people in ride share. Not, I didn't say everybody, but you don't see too many trying to fake it. It's hard to fake it because so many of us actually get out in these streets and fucking drive it. We can tell you when shit looks funny. We could be like, wait a minute. You made $392 in four rides. Yup. Show me the detail. What do you mean show you the detail? Show me the detail. Open that motherfucker. It's a $300 goddamn bonus for the week. That's what's sitting in that fuck. They made $92 on three fucking Lux rides, $30 a piece. The 300 came from a goddamn bonus they've been working on all fucking week. That's why in ride share, we can prove when motherfuckers are doing some shady shit. We'll call that shit out. And when I do my videos, I tell people, oh, that's a bonus in there. There's like a $90 bonus in there. Oh, it's a $50 bonus in that number. I tell people, because I'm not going to try to lie and say, oh, I'm the greatest driver ever, motherfucker. I did this ride right here and I got all this money in one day. What was the bonus in there? The bonus has been worked on every day. And I say, if I can do all of these bonuses, this is how much extra per ride each one of these rides really are. It's an extra $2 a ride. It's an extra $3 a ride. So instead of this being 13, this ride is really 16, but I have to hit the bonus. If I don't hit the bonus, this motherfucker is really $13. If I don't hit the bonus, this ride is really $3. It's not $6. And I say that because of the level of integrity and ride share has to be protected. Because more people are going to start producing more content. And I and I tell people, produce more content. Let people know how this shit really is. Because when the gig apps like Dara, Dara Karshashari, that motherfucker didn't even know how people were being charged. He had no idea. None. They don't look at our videos. Half these executives don't know what's going on in Russia. When we're honest and we keep promoting content and keep pushing our shit out there, that's how these executives, these employees, these the writers, how everybody knows out there. Everybody's going to find out, but we have to tell them through our videos because if we conceal this shit and just keep this shit in our cars and don't tell nobody, nobody will ever find out how fucked up it really is. It says, why do drivers hate passengers that don't tip? Willie Nelson. Well, it's not that we don't, we hate drivers that don't tip. And I say that if you watch my videos, Willie, you will hear me in my videos saying, oh, they don't tip. It's all good because I first won't take a shit fair. I won't. I won't take a shit fair. And that's what you will find out in my videos when you watch my channel. I specifically say what I'm looking for per mile. 
If I get it per mile, I'd be like, yeah, this dude, he ain't even got a tip. He was cool as a motherfucker, man. We laugh, we joke, he ain't even got a tip if you don't want to, man. That shit was cool. I say that shit in my videos. So it's not that drivers don't tip. I mean, uh, drivers hate passengers that don't tip. Drivers hate passengers that don't tip on a super low fare when the driver should have never took that fucking fare to begin with. But the driver feels, I just did $3. This took me about 10, 20 minutes. I went about four miles. I deserve a tip. And when people think that they deserve a tip for that, it's because they thought maybe this person knows how low it is and they're going to tip me on the back end. Because a lot of motherfuckers, drivers, people be like, oh, well, I tip after the service. I tip after the service. It's bullshit. They don't tip after the service. I tip after the, I tip in the app. It's bullshit. A lot of them don't. It's bullshit. One dollar per mile, Willie. Exactly. Well, you know it's a low fare based on the value of how you value your time. You pay $30 for 10 miles. Well, the thing is, out of that $30 for 10 miles, the driver, I think the driver should get at least $15 to $20. If they get anywhere between $15 and $20 of that, it would be fair for the driver. But we know the apps are taking half of that. Anywhere between 30% and 70% the apps are taking. So for 10 miles, I'm going to tell you right now, if you look at some videos on my channel, you'll see 10-mile trips for like $4.96. $7.80. So the app is taking $23 and giving the driver $7. So what you're paying for is like, imagine you wanted to go to a movie and see a movie. They said the movie costs, let's say $20. Okay, the movie's $20. So you get ready to pay your $20, but they say, but there's $60 worth of fees that you have to pay to get that $20 ticket. You'd be like, what? So that makes the movie cost $80. Yeah, because there's $60 in fees you got to pay. You got to pay the walking up to the counter fee. You got to pay this dude typing to the cash register fee. You got to pay the walking up to the popcorn counter fee. You got to pay the bathroom fee because in case you use the bathroom, you got to pay the going around the corner to the thing fee. It all adds up to $60. So now you got to pay $80 for the ride. That's how ride share is. And a lot of people are sitting there going, it's kind of like buying a ticket for a concert. Why would a concert cost, let's say, $70? But the person has to pay $225 for the ticket because all the fees they tack on. And that's how rideshare has become now. The apps have gotten really great. It used to not be like that, Willie. It used to not be like that. It used to be if you paid like the $30 ride for 10 miles, used to be like an $18 ride. That really used to be about an $18 ride, $19 ride. And you would tip somebody five bucks. So you end up paying $24 for the ride. That's what you pay for in the past. Now that ride is $30 and it leads you to not want to tip because what the apps did was they pushed everything to the point of elasticity. They said, how much is somebody really willing to pay out of pocket for this ride? And they said, well, normally for 10, for 10 mile trips, this is what people are paying, but then they're tipping $10. So it's coming out to almost like $28, $29 what people are really paying for this ride because they're tipping a driver 10 bucks. So it used to be 19, but now they're giving a $10 tip on that. So let's just charge the motherfucker 30 right off the bat. Just charge them 30 for the trip. So what the apps are doing is eating up our tip ahead of time. And they saying, well, if you want to tip the person, you could tip them on top of what we're upcharging you now. It used to not be like that. It used to be a fair price. They would sit up there and go, hey, you know, if we'll if 10 miles is $19, we're going to give the driver about nine, 10 of the dollars. And the rest is like, you know, you could tip the person. Every, so the driver might walk away with like $14, $15, $16, and everything's good. Yeah, when it comes to tips, I don't care if they do or not, but I don't want to be the reason they don't, as in dirty car, reckless car, missing a turn. Exactly, exactly. We drive the best we can, Kev. Okay, we drive the best we can. And if somebody appreciates getting home safe, not getting a DUI, because, I mean, we could say no, and these motherfuckers can sit on the curb till 5 o'clock in the morning waiting on a ride, pissed off, drunk. Can't get home. All because drivers, we don't have to take nobody. We can say, no, nah, I'm not taking a ride. I'll just wait till tomorrow and work during the daytime. All drunk people can just walk home. We'll work days. We could do that, but we don't. We give up our nights going out. And these people say, I appreciate you giving up your night going out. Appreciate you giving up your night of going out with your husband or your wife. Appreciate you giving up your night of tucking your fucking kids in bed to make sure I got home. I appreciate that. Here's $5. Here's $10. Hope you do well. Buy yourself some lunch tomorrow. Because a lot of motherfuckers don't have to be out working at night. 
We don't have to be taking people nowhere. There's a lot of things we could do other than give our time and our car and our life to a bunch of fucking strangers. Back in the day, we were told not to get in strangers' car. We were told not to give strangers a fucking ride. But we do it now. Like, it's like clockwork. Motherfuckers get in our car. We don't care. Get in. I'll give you a ride. Used to not be like that back in the day. This is Willie is a hater. This is tipping the Uber drivers like picking a pizza hut when I walk in and pick it up. Doesn't make sense. Well, if, if you think tipping an Uber driver is like tipping a pizza hut when you walk in and pick it up, what you can do is instead of you tipping the Uber driver, you can give the Uber driver your fucking car keys, give them your car, let the Uber driver drive your shit with you in it, burning your motherfucking gas, drop you off, drop off your car, and then you pay for an Uber to get that person back to their fucking car. You could do that. That way you ain't got to tip an Uber driver. You got taken in your fucking car. And all you did was just make sure the dude got back to his. You ain't got to tip him now. Because you can say, well, I just paid for my own gas. I just, you know, this and that. So I'll, I'll give you like 10 bucks for the ride. You say, I prefer taxis now. Cool. Do taxis. I tell motherfuckers all the time, taxis got so much fucking butt crack juice in them motherfuckers. They don't clean them nasty ass cars out. And you probably walking around with somebody's ass juice all over your fucking pants leg and shit. Because you decide to take a taxi or a driverless car. It's like, dude, Willie, what the fuck's going down the side of your pants? Fucking peanut butter or doo-doo. What the fuck's on you, man? Took a taxi today. Uber drivers, we clean our shit out. We make sure we look in our rear view mirror. We turn around, we look. We clean these motherfuckers out. Because one thing we not going to do is get reported for dirty car. We not getting reported for that. I haven't cleaned my fucking floorboards out. How many taxis you got in and you see a motherfucking cigarette butt sitting on the ground that was stuck to somebody's fucking shoe? Hay and grass all in the fucking back. Motherfucker, the, the goddamn door handle smell like somebody's underarm odor and shit. That's what happens when you get a taxi. Yeah, I used to clean a, a two, 2002 Honda Accord Hybrid. Yep, yep. Uh-oh. Mar Marilyn said, I lost my diamond status last month because I started cherry picking, and I don't regret it at all, even though I'm online a lot of hours, but I'm not pulling a million miles to cars. Yep, yep. Thought about that. Beer ride, prepaid for bar drop-off, and pick up. Hey. <laughs> Smoking weed. The most Ubers I use smell like smoke and sweat. <laughs> Willie Nelson, I don't know where the fuck you live, man. I don't even know. If, if all the Ubers you getting are smoking and sweating, you must live in a really dilapidated motherfucking area. He said, I'm in Atlanta. Hey, that's all you had to say. Those motherfuckers in Atlanta steal hubcaps still. They don't even steal rims. These motherfuckers steal hubcaps. Hubcaps cost $13. You told me all I need to know. You said, I live in Atlanta. That's all I need to know. These motherfuckers steal catalytic converters while you at the stoplight. These motherfuckers will take the goddamn valve stem cap off your fucking tires just for no reason. Oh, man, look at them valve stem caps. I need some. Man, they cost two bucks at the store, but I'll just take these. That's Atlanta. <laughs> it's like, you told me all I need to know. When you said Atlanta, it's all I need to know, man. Shit. Motherfucker, no wonder. Shit. The city of Atlanta itself has gone downhill. Atlanta used to be a mecca. Of, of tradition of like you know uh, it, it used to be a lot atlanta used to be like the next up and coming beverly hills in the south atlanta turned into shit these motherfuckers still got damn jeep fucking stickers off of jeeps and shit they always busting windows on jeep trying to steal shit out the back of cars all the fucking times man atlanta is like that now atlanta used to not be like that when i was young everybody wanted to go to atlanta now everybody wants to leave fucking atlanta these motherfuckers it's people in Atlanta, they will fucking drive somebody else's car to fucking work because they don't want their shit to get stolen. They be asking their neighbor, hey, dog, can I borrow your car today? What's wrong with your car? Nothing, I just want to go to work. Motherfucker scared to drive their own shit. I'll work in a certain area where people break in cars. Well, why you want to take my shit, motherfucker? <laughs> it's like, that's what it is, man. He's like, I got 4.6 driver, and both drivers got cars were filthy. That's funny shit. He's Democrats. <laughs> well, he said, Democrats. Hey. Oh, shit. Here's big.com, man. He's stupid again. Billy from last week. You gave me a ride on your lift car. It was clean. Except for the condom in the backseat. 3.1 ratings. <laughs> That's funny shit. That's funny shit. What Kev said, gal, I gave a lift ride this morning. Left her weed and rolling papers in the backseat. Gave it to the first homeless guy I saw in the corner. Freaked him out. He says, that Kev was like, hey, you want to have a good day? Here you go. <laughs> oh, the Wado. Yes, I saw that, man. Some of those trucks are ending up in Arizona now. 
Some of y'all trucks that, that got stolen from that Ford factory made it out here to Phoenix. They catching motherfuckers all over America with these goddamn Fords, man. Because what they doing is they're trying to bring them down here to probably get parts and shit out to like Mexico and other fucking chop shops out here. They stealing brand new fucking trucks and driving them motherfuckers all the way to Arizona. Shit's crazy, man. I'm like, how the fuck y'all make it that far? Raptors. Yup, yup. Merlin says, I've been diamond for the past five years with Uber and Lyft, but it's time to cherry picking and make money. Yeah. Merlin, because I tell people like this, man, when you cherry pick, you're selecting how many miles you'll you accept for dollars. Now imagine you saying at the in January, you said, I want to drive 30,000 miles this year, but I only want to drive for trips that are 3,000 miles or three dollars a mile. That's it. You're gonna make ninety thousand dollars in revenue. If you say three dollars a mile for the next thirty thousand miles you drive, you're gonna make ninety grand in revenue off thirty thousand miles. If you're taking a dollar a mile, you're only making thirty thousand. The difference between thirty thousand and ninety thousand is sixty thousand dollars you're missing out on because you're not cherry picking the rides you want. You can do thirty thousand miles a year, and if you divide that by twelve, that's about twenty five hundred miles a month. Divide that by four. That's almost 600 miles a week. 600 miles a week is roughly 100 miles a day for only six days. So for six days, you got to drive 100 miles. But each one, each ride has to be at least $3 a mile or better. You can do that in 12 hours. I think you can do that in 12 hours. You can say, I'm going to drive for $3 or better per mile for only 100 miles a day. You can knock that shit out in about six or seven hours. I guarantee Plus, when you get tips to surge or bonuses and shit like that, you can get $3 a mile. And you only got to do that shit 100 miles every day for, for six days. You can divide that shit up how you want to. You might want to say, I want to make more. Do 200 miles a day to make $600 a day. You could do it. Just how do you find that $3 mile ride and, and enough of them to make that money? Flex, you haven't been watching my videos. <laughs> Trust me on this one. When you see the fucking miles per rides I be doing, man, it's a lot of sitting in motherfucking Circle K parking lots. It's a lot of sitting in apartment parking lots. It's a lot of, you know, declining a lot of rides, canceling rides that are taking too long. I mean, you got to you got to really, really dig into these apps and you got to you can't just like tonight on my video tonight. Motherfucker, I pulled up. It was a four dollar ride for like two miles, two dollars, a ride, two dollars a mile. This motherfucker was taking too long. I had to cancel him because I couldn't wait. He was like, I'll be right out. And like two minutes passed. I'd already, the, he was supposed to have been ready when I got there. It was a $4 ride. He should have been ready when I got there. But because he made me wait for a $4 ride, I had to cancel. As soon as I canceled, foot around the corner, got like a $4 mile ride. That quick, that quick. But that's how you do it though, man. You got to get moving. Keep that shit moving. Don't fuck with these people like that. Oh, he says, did you get the ASU frats last night, Jeff? I was grabbing them all day. They tore my car up, tore up a bit, but as and tips was worth it. <laughs> he said, as and tips was worth it. I think I did get some ASU rides last night, but it was no frat rides. I got a few house parties that got broken up. They was breaking up house parties left and right, like uh, South Scottsdale area. They were breaking up house parties. They broke up a few of them in Tempe, but none was like frat parties, though. Man, you you crazy, but the as and tips was worth it. <laughs> White boy text said, I got deactivated playing country music. What should I do? You probably got deactivated because you didn't play it loud enough. That's the thing. When you play country music, you got to blast that shit. Country music is feel good music. Turn that shit up. The guitar's got to hit. The fucking banjo's got to hit. And you know these motherfuckers can sing. So if you playing country music too low, you're going to get deactivated. Crank that shit up. Turn it up. <laughs> no. We have some lining up opening for propane and propane accessories. Hank, Hank Hill. <laughs> Y'all motherfuckers are hilarious, man. Y'all hilarious. All right, what do we got? What up, Jeff? How you doing, brother? Thanks for the Sunday sermon. Oh, no problem, Darian, man. No problem, brother. Like I said, I I, I was, you know, about to get into my, my, I woke up from a little nap. I was about to get into deep sleep mode. I was like, you know what? Let me just get this out the way now. Because, you know, I watched Dash and Trader's video again. Like I said, man. And he, he made a lot of good points. He made like that people should be allowed to post whatever the fuck they want to post on their channels. You are the owner and creator of your channel. That's what you are. But on the other hand, I got to tell motherfuckers, you can't pretend that being a content creator puts you above 
other content creators or dashers or, you know, ride share delivery people and stuff like that. Just because of what we do, we all in the streets doing the same shit. There's no restaurant I can walk into. There's no house I could pull up to and say, I have a YouTube channel and I get treated any differently than any other driver. They're going to be like, cool. All right. This is where we're going. <laughs> it's like, don't give a fuck about my YouTube channel. I'm picking people up. Half the people I'm picking up are like going through something. I can't be like, hey, man, I got a YouTube channel. They'll be like, cool. <laughs> it's like, they don't give a shit. So I got to just be human. When you out in these streets riding and shit, you're a human. And I tell people, you got to have a sense of humanity. You got to stay human in doing this ride share and delivery shit because we're not doing anything spectacular. Think about it. When motherfuckers say we're not skilled or we're unskilled and this is unskilled, to a certain degree, they're right. What we're doing is unskilled. How we're doing it takes a lot of fucking skill, though. That's the trick. How can you make a living delivering hot dogs? Motherfucker, I was making $2,200 a week delivering hot dogs when the pandemic hit. So it's not what I'm doing. It's how am I doing it? That's the skill part. Because I don't go into an office and tell motherfuckers, following those files in that file cabinet out there is very low skill. Typing this document right here with fucking two fucking fingers like this is very low skill. Answering the telephone is very low skilled because anybody can answer a telephone and read a script. It's very low. I don't walk into an office saying that shit. So why do people come to ride share and delivery calling us unskilled? We're very skilled at running the business. What we're doing doesn't take a lot of skills, but it takes a lot of intellect. And if you don't have intellect, like I in one of my videos, I said, I would please anybody in W2. Take one week off of work. Get vacation pay for the week you take it off of work. Do ride share for a week. Do delivery for a week. I guarantee when you get off vacation and you go back to your motherfucking job, you'll say, I will never do that shit ever again. These motherfuckers are crazy. That's what they do. That's what they do. Oh, fuck that. They're crazy. I can't deal with all that. That's nuts. And that's how we work. That's what we deal with. Got to have thick skin. Zick said, I've had Patrick say that they have a YouTube channel and I don't give a shit. So yeah, I imagine it goes both ways. <laughs> exactly, Zig. <laughs> Real shit. A motherfucker jump in our car like, yeah, man, you've got to go faster. You've got to do all the stops I want to do. you got to do this and you've got to do that because i got a YouTube channel. Cool. I don't give a shit. The trip says I'm only doing one stop. I don't give a fuck what you got. you got a YouTube channel. Knock yourself the fuck out. It has nothing to do with what I'm getting paid right now. I'm just driving you from point A to point B. That's it. But I think because of social media, because of YouTube, because of TikTok and all these places, people really think that they are important. When I see, it's funny because I see it's not funny. Let me take that back. This is not funny. I see influencers die. I see influencers either get killed doing stunts or I see influencers just die of natural causes, die in car accidents, die drowning. I see them die. And the moment they die, the first thing their family does is send out a fucking GoFundMe. Need to go fund me. But I thought you were an influencer. I thought you had all this money. I thought you had all this shit going for you. You had all these promotions, these sponsors. You had all this money in the bank. You had all. Why are you setting up a GoFundMe for a dead influencer? It's like, you want to like now take money from people just because this person is dead? They should have money already from everything they're doing. They should. If they're that magnificent of an influencer with 320,000 subs, 200 million fucking videos, motherfuckers making, you know, $20,000 a fucking month the moment they die. Please donate to the GoFundMe. I'm like, what the fuck? Is this an influencer or what? What the fuck's really going on? And I'm like, I would never give to a dead influencer. Ever. Ever. And if I was an influencer and I've died, you know what? Cremate me for like fucking 200 bucks. I got 200 bucks. All the money I got, give it to my sons. Give it to anybody in my life at the time. Give them my cars. Give them whatever the fuck I got because I'm dead and I don't really care. But do not waste money on me. If I'm dead, I don't care. I'm dead. Cremate me. Put me in the fucking ashes. Throw me in the fucking ocean. Say Jeff's always with us. But do not set no motherfucking GoFundMe for me and don't blow money on funerals and caskets and all kind of shit that I... Don't go buy no $500 suit for me. I'm dead. I don't need a $500 suit. Fuck. Burn me. Send me back to ashes, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, all that shit. But when I see motherfuckers taking all of this fucking money, yeah, this YouTuber died, this TikToker died, $70,000 donated to them. What dead motherfucker needs $70,000? I'm like, especially if you're an influencer. 
It's not. I guarantee the money, the money is going towards the family. The person probably got cremated and put into an urn on the fucking thing, but all the money's going to the family to go out and kick it and party. They'll probably pay, you know, for a party, a funeral, pay for a church service, pay for all the catering, pay for everything else like that. But they're not doing nothing magnificent unless a whole bunch of people are going to show up to the funeral and they want to see the actual person in the casket and they got to buy a casket. Of course, that shit can get pretty expensive over time. Yeah, exactly. Somehow I missed all of the dying influences. I'll just trust it happens. Yeah, exactly. I mean, all you got to do is go to MSN.com because I think my shit's either Microsoft.com or MSN.com. Whenever I open my fucking home screen, when I open my computer, first thing you see is all the influencers that have died because that's that's what they want. They, it's clickbait. They want to show all the influencers that died, hoping somebody opens the article and reads about what happened and all the ads show up in the fucking article because influencers still generate revenue when they're dead. They generate ad revenue when they're dead. So people are still making money on this dead person. They're setting up GoFundMes. Ad revenue is being played. And people are all over the fucking place. 12K to put someone with a headstone. Exactly. 12K. What up, King James? My man. I'm taking all crap rides to try and others out of business driving my Avis Toyota Corolla. <laughs> the Avis. Yeah, that's right. Good adventure. Some YouTubers, some gig tubers think they're stars, but we used to that in LA. You right. You right. Bro, I see, I see channel, I see content creators every day while I'm out driving. I see content creators every single day when I'm driving. I see them with their backpacks on, their camera crew. Thanks, big horn kid. Hey, gotta go. Mom's making a birthday cake. Thanks as always. Thanks for all the great content. Hey, brother, thank you for the five bucks, my brother. Appreciate that. Give me a couple of donuts for that. And happy birthday. Fellow Leos in the house. That's what it is. That's what it is. Oh, you got the lion on your thing. Leos. Yeah, but I'm out all the time. And I'm, yeah, Glitch should at least been shared with drivers. Oh, I see what encouraging letters says. I'm late, so I had to do some rewinding, but you hit the nail on the head with talking about how the Glitch should have at least been shared with drivers that spent time and money supporting the conference. I believe that shit, man. That would have been a good thank you. Like, thank you for coming to my conference. Thank you for, you know, taking the day off, the week off, the time off, flying in, whatever. I got something secret for you. I got something that can help you. That would have been a fair trade. Like I said, if motherfuckers use glitches or not, as long as you're willing to deal with the consequences, cool. But everybody's saying there was no consequence because DoorDash already knew about it and they were just letting people use it. But once it fucking hit the airwaves and now everybody knows about it, they have to do something now. I get it. I get it. But like I was saying, if there are so many content creators out there they're walking around their little backpacks on, their little lights in the air. They got a little crew around them. They got the scene, the party scene behind them. They're like talking and stuff. They're all animated in the camera and everything. And I'm dropping people off. I'm seeing everybody create content all over the place. That's why I made a video saying, if you want to stream something, just create content. Put a video on YouTube. Let it stream. At some point, you're going to get revenue for that stream. It could be two videos, one video. All it takes is for a video just to be played in some country or somewhere. It could be a one hour video that you just recorded doing something, splice it all together and just put it online. You might come back in a year, two years and be like, what the fuck? Man, I've been getting goddamn direct deposits for this video. No wonder. I had no idea it was this many goddamn plays on it. It's just content. And a lot of content creators think they're stars. Like you said, they think they're movie stars. They think they're really, really important people when really you're just people. You're important to somebody. Everybody's important to somebody, but you're not important to everybody. That's the difference. So be important to your son, your daughter, your wife, your husband, your mom, your dad, your grandparents. Be important to the people who you should be important for. But don't start thinking you're important for everybody you cross paths with. Because I'm telling you, just like my brother said, it's motherfucking content creators getting our car every day. I got a YouTube channel. Cool. I got one too. Motherfucker, Eric, I, it's like a pair of shoes. Motherfucker, everybody got one. We all got a YouTube channel. It don't make us no important. We still grinding out every day. We still working every day. Exactly. He says, I got one too. <laughs> Real shit, man. And once you come to the realization, that what we're doing is not that fucking magnificent. What we're doing is sharing energy. That's it. We're sharing energy. And that's important. Sharing the right kind of energy. But it doesn't put anybody above or beyond. Like I said, I get more information out of the comments 
And I even post the comments, not tell people about the comments because that shit helps me when I'm out driving. Motherfuckers catch me fucking up all the time because I post my videos. They catch me fucking up all the time. Jeff, you should be doing this. Jeff, why don't you try to do this? I'm like, never thought about that because I haven't. Sometimes I just don't think about shit because I'm driving, I'm doing something. And they go, this is what you should do. I turn around and I do it and the shit works. We got some important motherfucking people on our channel that know how to drive. Your influencers think they have special status like that person in the pink car that assaulted someone with a gun. That shit right there, man. That shit. And I'm like, how would you think you were so, like, above because of the amount of likes you got or the amount of views you got? Did it raise you to the status of, of some type of movie star or somebody that did something spectacular like break a record in baseball or break a record in fucking basketball or football? I mean, all you did was have people watch you fucking do a backflip on a fucking trampoline and land in a swimming pool. Two million fucking views. Oh, my God, I'm a star. I'm a star. I did a backflip off the trampoline, landed in the pool. Two million fucking views. I'm a sensation. Motherfucker, six-year-old did the same shit, but he just wasn't on camera. You're not a sensation. You did the same shit a six-year-old did with no camera. It's not that fucking critical. But people start thinking they're fucking critical. Give me a shout out or I come take my mic. Moik, Moik. <laughs> hey, you always in the building with the flames. Moik, Moik, with the flames. Even in the comments, you be dropping them flames. That should be cracking me up. But that's the thing, though, man. A lot of content creators are doing the most basic, general shit. And it's they really think that it's something that anybody can do. I mean, you have a platform to use to help influence people, but you should use that influence to create an, a source of energy, an energy of let's not let each other fucking fail. Let's do that. Let's not let each other fail. That's energy number one, rule number one of energy. Let's not let each other fail. If you see a way that I could do something better, I can say it. If you have, like I tell motherfuckers, if you got a hack or a glitch, just email me. And I've said that shit in videos. He said, if you weren't already sitting in that down in that back seat, I'll tell you, sit your ass down. <laughs> That's funny shit. Ebony's in the house. What's up, lady? What's up? She walked in the building. There you go. Happy Sunday. But yeah, I mean, that should be the first rule of content creation. Help the people that are help supporting your channel. That should be the first rule. If somebody's supporting your channel, help them. Because fuck all these companies trying to use us as pawns. These companies see people like Pedro. They see people like Dash and Trey. They see people like, you know, uh, what's that dude, Bentley. They see people like him. And they go, oh, my God, you're our key to get to all of these fucking drivers. We know all these drivers make money because they're all drivers. And you're telling them how to make money. Now, how do we get the money out of these drivers into our pockets? That's the trick. It's like the Nat Turner fucking syndrome. You use one person to get to the masses hoping to get the masses to buy whatever product you fucking pushing. And if nobody knows about Nat Turner, Nat Turner was the was a black slave and he could read. They taught him how to read. Like people were sneaking to teach him how to read. They taught Nat Turner how to read. And since he knew how to read, they taught him how to read the Bible. Once Nat Turner learned how to read the Bible, you have all these African slaves that don't speak English at all. They don't speak English. Nat Turner was told to teach them the Bible in their language, to help them teach them English, like how to speak. That's what Nat Turner was used as. A lot of these fucking gig, but the only thing about Nat Turner is he turned on the company. He turned and said, I'm not teaching nobody none of this shit no more. Actually, I'm going to teach them how to stand up for themselves. I'm going to teach all these slaves how to stand up and be strong and that we need to revolt and we need to like get freedom in this country. I'm going to teach them that. So Nat Turner was a, a company man. They built this motherfucker. He was like a Pedro. He was like a fucking Dent Bentley. He was being built by the fucking company. Built by the fucking company. But one day he had a fucking a, a revelation. He was like, why am I doing this shit for the company? These people are just like me. And I'm helping these people in the company affect these people that are just like me, using me as the fucking pawn. So that's when the revolution started. A lot of people started revolting back against the company. Even Nat Turner, the one that they built, he became public enemy number one because the man they built decided to start helping people that really needed the fucking help. So if you want to be Nat Turner, be Nat Turner. 
but be the right version of Nat Turner. That's the difference. Be the right version of Nat Turner. Don't be the early version of Nat Turner. Be the Nat Turner that woke the fuck up and realized what was really going on. All these drivers out here need fucking help. We're getting evicted out of apartments. We're losing our cars. We can't afford repairs because we ain't making enough profits to afford repairs. How the fuck can you pay for a repair and pay for rent if your profit margin is so low you barely scraping by? And we talk about profit margins on my channel. We talk about profit margins because it's important to run a business. If you're running a business at a 0% profit margin, it means every dollar you make, you're spending. That's a 0% profit margin. 50% profit margin is for every dollar you make, half of it is expenses. So you've got a 50% profit margin. You're like, holy shit, I'm keeping half the money I'm making. The trick is to get your profit margin very high. Because you as a driver, as a contractor, are using that money to live on. You're not just using that money to reinvest back into your business and to keep buying shit. You're using that money to live on. So your profit margin has to be high enough to live on. And we push that. You, you right, Duato, man. Lift each other up, not push someone down. And that was my main issue with the glitch, man. That was my only issue with it. And you can look at any video I've made about it, any comment I've put about it. That is my main issue. To look at my brothers, my sisters, look at everybody out here driving, looking at what I go through driving. I need fucking front tires. I need brakes. I need this. How can I get that? If I can't, do I have anything that can help that person a little bit more to get that front tire, to get that fucking serpentine, to get that alternator? What do I got in my arsenal that can help that person? I can't sell them no bullshit because if I sell them bullshit, it's not helping my brother. It's not helping my sister. It's really not helping them. So I've got to dig deep and say, you know what? I got something that might help you. And like with the glitch, if everybody says it was okay to use, DoorDash knew about it, it was not a big fucking deal, then why was it so heavily concealed? That part doesn't make sense to me. That's the part that doesn't make sense to me. If it was so okay, so fucking okay for people just to use it every once in a while or use it when they need it or use it all the fucking time then why was it not dispersed to people that really fucking needed it? Why was it only given to people at the top to give the illusion of success instead of giving to everybody down? Like I said, we could have did that shit in Discord, did it in Patreon, did it in a whole fucking, you know, a email chat session. You could have gave it to the motherfuckers in person when they showed up at the GigCon. Hey, we're going to do something, turn off all cameras. We're going to show you guys a trick real quick. We need you to take this back because you supported our GigCon. We're going to send you back with something that nobody has. And everybody would have been like, damn, I'm glad I fucking came here. When you go back, share with the people in your area that you want to share it with. Do not post it online because we would like this glitch to stay open because it can help people. Do not post it online. It would have been like that. It could have been easy like that. But somebody decided to post it online. Yeah. Kevin, you're right. How do we know some content haven't done that and help people out? You're right. That's a very valid statement. How do we know some of them haven't done that? I mean, nobody's raised their hand. I'm saying, you know what? Actually, Pedro helped me out. It was it was OK. Like I said, if it's OK to do it and everybody knows it's OK to do it, the only thing we don't want is the actual details of how to do it posted online because DoorDash, if they did know about it, would shut it down. If they did know about it, they wouldn't shut it down. But if they hear people saying, you know what? I actually was helped by those guys and they did kind of help us out. You got a good point, Kevin. Some people could have been helped out with it. Some could have been. But for so many people to be like, I've never heard of a glitch. What is this glitch? I never heard about it. what's going on. That kind of lets me know it was under the radar from a community for a long time, a long time. And we've seen a lot of suffering in the community. Yeah, Autobahn, you're right. I could talk about the history of the glitch as I know it, but try to avoid all the drama. Yeah, and see, that's the thing, Autobahn. If it was okay to use it, and everybody right now, August the 20th, 2023, is in good faith and conscious saying there's nothing wrong with using it, it's okay, there's nothing wrong with using it, then nobody should feel bad about even knowing about it unless they feel bad about knowing about it but promoting something else when they could have been helping people because that's the only issue I see because I tell my fuckers, it's not a problem using it. I have said that in multiple videos on multiple threads. It's not a problem using it. If that's what you do, 
I wouldn't show people that I use it online. I wouldn't show it, no. But I would at least make my fucking money so I could pay my bills. That's what I would do. I mean, this is real life. So the history of the glitch, to me, is, is, is a moot point right now. All we know is that it does exist right now. Everybody wants to point fingers at everybody. And I told people, you do not have proof to know who started it, who did it, who's using it, who's not using it. Like Kevin said, who actually helped somebody with it and gave it away. You don't have proof of a lot of shit to be making a lot of claims. There's a lot of things you cannot say. But all you can say is that it does exist. And a lot of people weren't helped with it if they could have been. That's all you can really say. But like I said, you don't know who was helped. All you know is a lot of people weren't because a lot of people haven't heard about it. They're like, man, I wish I would have known that. Motherfuckers be posting up videos of them suffering and shit. Comments of them fucking suffering. Comments, man, I got to go back to a W-2. This shit's fucked up. I can't even do this. I got to go back. My AR is too low. I can't be a top dasher. I can't dash anytime. I can't do this. I mean, you haven't seen all these comments about that shit in the DoorDash community. So we know that it did exist. That's all we know. How it came to fruition, who figured it out, how it was figured out, all that shit. And honestly, in my opinion, this is a fucking moot point, man. Jesus, I don't feel bad about knowing it and using it. 92% AR and ready for dinner ship. And that's the thing. A lot of people knew about it. A lot of people know about it now, and they're currently getting their ARs up using it. In my opinion, use that motherfucker until they patch it. Use it until they fucking patch it. The only issue is people that are using it that know it exists and are using it until their AR goes up and everything, they're probably not using Solo. They're probably not using Maximo or Power now because now they have the glitch. That's the part that fucks up a lot of the content creators because their sponsorship revenues and their business they were running were coming from legitimate aspects of how to do DoorDash, how to do delivery, how to do ride share. Their money was coming from the legitimate aspect of doing it through the box that you can download and stuff like that. It wasn't through the hack. If the hack is out there, the bots aren't necessary. And that's where the sponsorship has the problems. And that's why I think a lot of it was concealed because if you tell everybody about the hack, they will be like, well, I don't really need the bot because I can manually sit there and watch it now and I can force the glitch to work and I can just watch my AR go up. Using the bot doesn't make your AR go up. Using Power of Solo doesn't make your AR go up. But using the hack does. So I think, like, like Kev, man, I feel you, man. I would, I would use it. I would use it and I wouldn't even fucking feel bad about it. That's the thing. If it's out there and everybody knows and it's not bad to use and everybody's saying it's not bad to use, it should be okay. Why should I feel bad for using it? Why should I even feel bad for having the opinion of saying people should be able to use it? I don't even feel bad about my opinion. It, if it does make me wonder if DoorDash actually did to set the glitch up purposely for certain drivers, creators, because everyone knows about it, but yet, why is DoorDash still allowing it? That's what I'm saying, Encourage, and that's what I'm saying. Because DoorDash almost has their foot in their mouth right now because of everybody saying, oh, DoorDash knew about it, DoorDash used it, but DoorDash set it up for certain creators, certain creators, that could be discriminatory business practices. You're discriminating against everybody on your motherfucking app except certain creators, the $10,000 creators that probably had the fucking glitch, <laughs> the 10K creators. But yet, you're sitting there letting all these other people take all these shit orders, knowing these people don't have to take these shit orders if you treated them like certain creators, discriminatory business practices. And so I think that's why now DoorDash's hand is forced. They're forced to say, we've got to shut the patch down now because now it's online. Everybody's talking about it out in the open instead of behind closed doors where it should be talked about. It should be talked about in the, in the back channels, in the back cave and shit like that. Shouldn't be online because my people know I have made videos way before the glitch was even discovered, way before the glitch. Was, I'll, and I'll be talking about rideshare shit. And I'll be like, if you know about a hack, or a glitch. Do not post that shit on my channel because I don't want the developers at the app to say, let's close that shit down because now you just fucked up a lot of revenue potential for whoever was using that shit. We don't work for the apps. We're not engineers for them. They need to do this shit on their own. They need to go out and drive and try shit. 
to see what works, what don't work, how to do shit. That's their fucking job. They're paid $120,000 a year, $140,000 a year, $200,000 a year. Let them motherfuckers get in the car and drive around to see how the app works. They getting paid enough. But if I'm using it and I'm barely making a grand a week, cool. I'm good. I don't got to drive that many hours. I could drive 15, 20, 30 hours and make a grand a week. Cool. Let's do it. Let's do it. Using this little hack. Let's do it. But you don't put it online and you chop that shit off. Because a lot of motherfuckers was out there, man. A lot of motherfuckers was out there using that shit. And now you got, you know, bills being severed. Can't make enough money to do this. You can't make enough money to pay that. Because the system you were using now, it was spoken out out loud. Not that it was just, like I said, even if I found out what gig content creators and everything knew about it and who was using it and all that shit, I wouldn't say you guys are horrible for fucking using that. No, knock yourself the fuck out. My whole stance is, why weren't more people assisted? That's my only stance. That's it. But like what Kevin says, how do you not know people weren't? So like I said, Kevin provides a, another aspect to the debate. How do you know people weren't? How do you know how many people weren't? Like I said, this shit can get deep and sideways. The only issue the content creators got to worry about now is how do I protect my sponsorships? Which is why I think, in my opinion, like I said, me and Dash and Trader, we can go back and forth all my fucking day. Me and Pedro go back and forth all fucking day. I think it was wrong for him to call us out to Pedro court like that, but I would never stop that dude's fucking cash flow because he's got a daughter to take care of. He's got a wife to take care of. He's got a, a fucking mortgage to pay. One thing you don't do is attack a man's family out of hate and jealousy. You don't do that. And I think it was a direct attack on his family just to see all this shit, just to open the motherfucking YouTube and see all this shit going on in the fucking YouTube world. It was an attack on his family because if you think about the gist of it, this is how he pays for his daughter, how he pays for his wife, how he pays for his life. And should this dude suffer? No. We should just use what the fuck he was using to help everybody else out once we find out what the fuck he's using. We solve the problem. And I'm like, you can't destroy some fucking body and, and really feel good about it. I don't know. I don't know. That's Like I said, I'm a, I'm a different cat, man. I'm a different cat. I, I might not agree with Pedro. I might say, fuck Pedro. I might say, fuck Dash and Trader. But if they ever needed something and they said, Jeff, man, my family's down and out. Our house is caught on fucking fire. Then they got a room. They got a room. I'll see what I can do. Because when it comes down to it, all this YouTube shit and all this up, this is just, this is us hanging out, chatting, laughing, joking. This is us making fun of each other, talking about strategy and tactics and shit like that. When it comes to real motherfucking life, though, you can't look at somebody's kid and be like, you deserve to suffer. No, she don't. That kid don't deserve that shit. Just because of something her dad did or didn't do. These kids don't ask for that shit. We all got kids. These kids don't ask for that shit. So we got to look at it from a bigger aspect of life, which is why when I said, when I say in my videos, I don't like posting chats and about all these bots on my fucking channel. Because if I do that, then I'm giving the engineers a way to shut that channel that somebody else was probably using. I don't want to shut down a channel. These apps fuck us over all the time. Let's fuck them back. Fuck it. Fuck them back. Use it. Cool. Oh, Jeff. Tony came in the building. This is Jeff. Just joining here. Just my point of view here. Being accused of using a glitch that I didn't use. Why should I tell people about it if I don't know if it can get someone deactivated? True. True. Because at the time you found out about it, probably, you probably didn't know that it could get somebody deactivated or not. I tell people like this, half the shit all of us do could probably get us deactivated. I don't know. Even with me telling people to use my cash app or Venmo QR code instead of giving me cash if they wanted to tip me, that could have get me deactivated. But with my logic of a tip being my money, I use it. I use my QR codes. If somebody says, well, you're going to get deactivated for that. If somebody at Lyft or Uber calls me and says, we can deactivate you for that because if somebody says they want to give you cash, they can pay you in cash, legal tender. If they want to tip you through the app, they can tip you through the app, legal tender. But we specifically state we don't want any third apps involved in any transactions dealing with this. So they can constitute Cash App and Venmo as a third party app. They could say PayPal is a third party app. Cash or the, the uh, Uber or Lyft app. That's all we could use. They could come up with some shit like that. And I'd be like, well, I didn't know. I didn't know because motherfuckers be tipping me on Venmo. Motherfuckers tip me on Cash App. I didn't know. 
So sometimes if you don't know if you can be deactivated or not, the safest bet is to say, either I'm not going to pass it to nobody or you say, I'll pass it to you, but you're at your own fucking risk. If you blow your engine, if you get deactivated, if you do it, you're at your own. I'm just putting it out there. You're on your, there is no guarantee and no warranty with this shit that you will have a job next week. It's on you. Knock yourself out. And that's what I say. Driver, I appreciate you speaking the truth, brother. I have a new level of respect for you. God bless you and hope you have a great week. You too, driver. Hey, bless you, brother. Bless you. I hope you do well this week, man. I hope you do well this week. And thank you. Much love and respect, brother. Much love. AC Bid Strategist was up. Uh, encouraging letters. He talked back to Tony. He says, hey, it's not just knowing about the glitch. If you use it and then showcase how great a driver you are while hiding a little secret. And that was another point right there. It was the, the misleading. The misleading. That was the part that was throwing a lot of people off. Yeah, Audubon said that should just be good vibes. The fools who started this drama, only enemies in my mind. And that's the thing about that, Audubon. The people that started posting these videos, I understand why. Out of anger. And and it's we're not new to the, to the emotion of anger. We're not new to it. We've lived on this planet for a while. We know when people get mad, they do some crazy shit. We got motherfuckers in prison right now that got mad and did some crazy shit. And they probably serving life sentences for that shit right now. When people get mad, they're not in their right state of mind. And I get that. But a lot of people, when they get mad, they need somebody to check that energy. Like, dude, you pissed the fuck off. I wouldn't do that. Chill the fuck out, man. I wouldn't do that. And that's my stance. A lot of people are watching people. It's cool to be mad and voice your opinion. Go the fuck off. If you hate Pedro, say fuck Pedro, that motherfucker, and go the fuck off. But think about how far you want to go with that anger. Because I was always like, well, that's kind of fucked up for Pedro Nam to do that shit, man. That's fucked up. But I still wouldn't post that glitch online. <laughs> it's like somebody's probably using that shit right now to fucking feed their family. I'll, I mean, my anger can only go so fucking far. And once you might say some shit about Pedro or this or that about Pedro, you got to realize that there's a lot of people involved with Pedro. Pedro's not a content creator like us. And I say that shit in a serious manner. We don't deal with sponsorships. We don't deal with companies and corporations that deal with drivers and shit. We don't deal with a lot. We don't deal with a lot of shit because Pedro's channel is a business channel now. It's not just a driver. We got driver channels. We do a lot of shit. We got driver channels. But once you hit a certain level within the community of YouTube and in sponsorship and all that shit, you operate at a different frequency than what we are. So I would have, like I said, my original thing, I couldn't put shit on Pedro. I couldn't put shit on nobody. I just know they're all quiet about it and nobody's saying nothing about it. That's all I really said about the shit. But I couldn't attack this man's source of revenue, his income, because Pedro's not a bum. He's not living on the streets by himself in a, with a fucking shopping cart and a dog with a bandana. He's not. That's not Pedro. This dude's got some people at the house that he's taking care of. He's got people at the house he's taking care of. So when I think about the people at my house that I take care of, the people at my son's houses that my money still takes care of, stuff like that. You've got to kind of open your mind up to the realm of life and how big this shit is and how mad do I want to be? How mad do I want to be to where I start fucking up households when I can help households with the information I just fucking learned? I just learned something amazing that motherfuckers were using. I learned something amazing. I can help all these fucking people and I can look like the fucking hero that Pedro wouldn't be. I can give everybody the glitch behind the fucking scenes, something that Pedro wouldn't do. It saves Pedro's ass, makes me look like a fucking hero. Everybody wins. But that's not how shit went. That's not how shit went. And it's kind of sad that it did that. Uber Jeep, yeah, the accusing of myself and others, that's not right. And I agree with you. If you use a cheat to make money and tell people that they need a high AR, but don't tell people how to cheat, that, yeah. That's right, that's right. And you can only say, and, and that's the thing, man, say that isn't fair. And I have no reason to believe Pedro promotes high AR and uses the glitch to do it. Yeah, because if you're going to make a, a specific, specific claim on a person, ooh, man, man. You got to have something documented because like I said in my original live, slander, libel, those are two things. And if you use slander and libel against somebody, it affects their business. They can put a lien against your house. They can put a lien against anything in your life. No matter what kind of revenue stream you making, they can get you. What's up, Coco? And he said, yep, that's what dad said. 
<laughs> Driver, you still say, if you ever come to Vegas, you got a room. But if you take a shit in your bathroom, light a match. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> take a candle with you, goddamn it. Just walk in with a candle. Yeah, encouraging letters he has been, but that doesn't mean he glitched his phone to do it. And see, that's the thing, man. There, there's a way that, I, like I said, it's hard to retract everything that we've seen transpire over the past two weeks. It, it's impossible. It's impossible. See, all I will say is one YouTuber was very nonchalant about it, and I think he figured it out himself while another charged money for it, and somehow all the heat went on to people not involved. And Autobahn, you could be completely correct. Because all we know is what's out there. All we know is what's out there. There's been no true presentation of anything that we've seen as far as the timeline of events and text messages, emails, anything like that, conversations. We've never seen it. We've just seen a lot of accusations thrown around. That's all we've really seen. And I'm always saying everybody's talking about it, but there's one table kind of quiet about it. But now the table is starting to speak up. And the table has very valid points of what they're speaking up because you can't accuse like in this world, in this whole fucking world, you are innocent until somebody can prove you guilty without a reasonable doubt. So if there is any reasonable doubt that anything anybody is saying can be disproven, any reasonable doubt. And just like Kevin said today, he said, you don't even know if they help anybody or not. Reasonable doubt. Kevin's right. Kevin's right. So even my claim in saying, oh, they didn't help nobody. They did. They just kept it to themselves. They didn't help nobody. I, I don't have proof of that. Kevin just called it out. Kevin said, well, you don't have proof that they didn't help anybody. You don't have any proof of that. For all you know, they could have been emailing to a whole lot of fucking people. Could have been helping a lot of people out under the radar without anybody knowing. You're right. You got a point. Because I can't say, no, they didn't. How do I fucking know they didn't? Kevin called it out. I don't know. But that's why we have these kind of debates and these conversations. Because there's a lot of things can be thrown around out of anger and people don't stop, slow down, think, and be like, wait a fucking minute, wait a minute. You got a good point. You got a good point. Ricky Moss, I got nothing but respect for Paige. Uh, now, every thing, uh, time, every he gets challenged, he stands 10 toes down on it. Oh, brother, I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that, man. Pedro is, is alleged to have lied about his earnings and trips. Supposedly, there's going to be proof that tonight from another community member. Yeah, I heard about that, Em. I heard about that. Jay Boat in the house. Jay Boat in the house. For such a big channel, he still pulls to the smaller channels and gets his message across. Yeah, and, and Ricky, I'm going to tell you what it is about, about the smaller channels. The smaller channels, we're not corporate yet. We're not sponsored yet. We don't have to answer to anybody yet. So we can say what the fuck we want to say. You get pages like Bentley's. That page is like vanilla fucking ice cream, in my opinion. No motherfucking toppings. No fucking nuts on it. No, no. Bentley's page a long time ago. A long time ago. Used to be Rocky Road ice cream. The shit used to be Rocky Road. Once that motherfucker went DoorDash, he's vanilla ice cream. I can't even watch Bentley's channel because it makes me think of me in the fucking office a long time ago. It makes me think of myself sitting in corporate America, sitting there at fucking tables going, well, the financials that we have gotten, Karen uh, Jackson, when she represented the financials and two days ago without the financial statements and the disclosure agreement, that's what it makes me fucking feel like. It's like watching Bentley talk, it, it's not watching somebody keep it real. It's watching somebody keep a job. And that's different. You can keep it real or you can keep a job. You got to make a fucking choice. And that's why the smaller channels, man, you, you can keep it real with the smaller channels. That's why they're so engaging, so entertaining, so enlightening, so digging into the real fucking meat of a topic because they're smaller channels. The bigger your channel gets, the shittier it gets. I've always said, man, I hope my channel stays small. Man, I love this shit because I know every fucking body. We be laughing and talking and chatting back and forth. Yeah, he's, Bentley is a really self-admitted DoorDash social media deal. Pedro doesn't have a deal with DoorDash. No, I don't think Pedro has a deal with DoorDash. I think he's got other stuff going on. Hot facts, Robert Reese, my man. And, and that's the thing. Once your channel gets to a certain size, you are now under a radar, a radar of other companies and corporate people who might want your phone number to call and say, hey, man, 
We see you got 70,000 subs. That's a lot of accounts you got linked to you, man. 70,000 people is a lot of people. You want to kind of do a deal? We got this new fucking seatbelt holster that we think, you know, your people might be interested in. If you could throw it on your channel, show how you lock your seatbelt in, how many you put the link in your fucking thing. Anybody buy this seatbelt clamp? It's all marketing. It's sales and marketing. Once your channel gets that point, you're a salesperson now. You ain't a YouTuber no more. You're a salesperson. You're from YouTube content creator to YouTube sales. So you got to sit around and sell people some shit. You got a lot of motherfuckers on your channel. You got to sell people some shit. I don't think I can sell people shit. This is Jimmy Hopper, I swear. <laughs> Vanilla ice cream. <laughs> Man, what's good? He love. He's back in the building. Back in the building. Yeah, ride share and food delivery is always changing the rules. So using their app issues, the benefit is okay. Yup, yup. Yeah, he said a few days ago, I was uh, politely asked Pedro if he was going to make a video on this explosive news about the glitch news. That's all I said. I was called a clown. <laughs> he said I was called a clown. That's funny shit. That's funny. Man, that shit's funny. That shit's funny. He says I was called a clown. Man, I'm fucking dead. I'm dead. That shit's funny. This is man. I bet if he wasn't getting attacked by so many, he would have a real combo with you. And, and I believe, I think Pedro has a platform in which he doesn't have to have any other content creator on his channel. What Pedro needs to do is get out of the car. Environment is every fucking thing. Environment is everything. Get out of the car, get away from the bed on you fucking background, and go sit somewhere with his fucking daughter. Let her play on the swings. He can get a microphone. Like I said, put a microphone, have a camera. Play with his daughter. Have a conversation with motherfuckers. Let them know this is real life. Sometimes when I'm talking to people, I'm in the garage working on cars. I got some broke shit. I'm in there fixing broke shit. Talking to people on the fucking camera. Fixing, because I love motherfuckers. This is real life. This is real fucking life. I got broke shit. This ain't all studio. This is real fucking life. I got to fix my broke shit so I can get out of this house. This is a man went full informer mode and person in a real Jamaican. <laughs> That's funny shit. That's funny shit. This is, I really believe Pedro can stand up for himself, so I'll stop replying to hypothetical situations he would do. That's my bad. No, you good, Tony. You good. Because I tell motherfuckers all, all he said candy coated with sprinkles, ice cream with sprinkles. Rick, you stupid. <laughs> man. And that's the thing, man. You you don't have to present hypotheticals to to kind of judge what's going to happen. A lot of time in my videos, I speak on hypotheticals as I'm driving. I'm saying, you see that motherfucking surge up there? It's going to disappear before I get to it. It's completely hypothetical of what I'm saying, but the hypothesis comes off of experience, things I've experienced with these fucking apps. So I'm making a hypothe hypothesis to say that surge is going to disappear before I get to it. So I either got to go on airplane mode, turn the app off, do something. And sure enough, my hypothesis comes right. I roll up on that motherfucker, it just blanks out. It's gone. So all hypotheses are not bad. Some of them just state shit based on, like, prior information. Like, what can happen? What can potentially happen? And I'm one of those people that really believe that, you know, Pedro has more to lose than any gig tuber out here. He's got more to lose. Bentley solid. He ain't speaking on that shit at all. This motherfucker's a DoorDash. Company man, he ain't speaking on that shit at all. DoorDash like, don't you make a fucking video about that. He's like, okay. Don't you say a motherfucking word about it. okay. And that's a sad place to be because I was at that place before I retired from accounting. I was at that place. Jeff, now when we go in this meeting, do not talk about second quarter or third quarter. Even though we know about second quarter, third quarter, if they ask, we'll tell them. Okay. Even though I knew. That we can explain second quarter and third quarter completely thoroughly, completely thoroughly to not have any fucking problems. Don't you mention that shit unless you're at, okay. And that's how corporate life can be. That's how, man, it's, it's what it is, man. And I'm one of those people that think if you're a content creator, you're creating energy. You're a content creator. A lot of the, once you get big, you're not a content creator. You're a content regurgitator. People are telling you what to say, what to do, how to act, and you regurgitating that shit to the crowd you built up by being a creator. You were a creator at one point. You are now a regurgitator. Everything coming out of your mouth is vomit. Vomit that another motherfucker fed you something and you throwing it out to the public now. 
you used to create. Nothing wrong with being a content creator. Motherfuckers should trust you as a content creator to trust your artistic creativity. And that's why motherfuckers leave record labels. They leave record labels because they can't create their own art. They can't create their own content. They'd rather be an independent label. I'm an independent artist. I'm an indie artist. I don't want to be with a label. Because once you change an artist, once you change their creation, you're molding them into be an industry fucking plant. They're not an artist no more. They're an industry plant now. You got to make a song about this. You got to make a song about that. You got to wear these kind of clothes now. We paying you, motherfucker. Wear these kind of shoes. Wear your hat sideways. Tomorrow, wear your hat backwards. Wednesday, wear a hat the other fucking sideways. You're an industry plant now. You're not a creator no more. You're a regurgitator. And and what what did you say? The Jeff, and that's the some shameful for these exposures are accused Bentley of being a given a glitch meant just for YouTubers. That's just because who told me isn't even a content creator. Yeah. I mean, you making some serious accusations out there about individual people doing individual things. Slander, libel. It's a serious fuck. I tell motherfuckers Cardi B, Cardi B sued Tasha K. For slander and libel, Cardi B won all that money. Tasha K had to move out of the fucking country. When you fucking get on internets and you start saying shit about people, that's slander, that's libel. If a judge agrees with you, you got to move out of the fucking country to protect your assets. Because they will get your ass in the States. You got a judgment against you in the States. You got to lead the country now. That's what Tasha K did. Yeah. That's right, Rob. Robert Reese, man. At, you got to understand a lot of these people, once you get with a record label, you might say, I like to play the piano and I like to play the guitar and I like to make music about fucking puppets and huskies. Well, we don't want you to rap about puppets and huskies no more. We want to fucking get you an earring in your nose. We're going to put a tattoo on your neck. We're going to make you rap about, you know, Cadillacs and motherfucking, you know, curb fillers and shit on them. We're going we gonna to turn you into a real G. But this person gr- gained an audience. Rapping about puppets and fucking huskies. That's how they got their content. That's how they got the following. But once somebody gets a following that big, you get motherfuckers who don't want nothing better than to control your ass. That's all they want to do. And that's kind of like what what kind of threw me with the Pedro shit today. You motherfuckers better come to Pedro court because if you don't, and I'm like, who does he think he is? You can't control people. Even Dash and Treader told you, you can't control fucking people. Everybody does what they want to do, talks how they want to talk, when they want to talk about it, where they want to talk about it. You don't control people. Even your boy said that. He understands that. But when you get to the point where you like, you have to come on my channel to discuss it, no other place, Sunday, be here. If you're not, you're a coward, can't speak about it no more. You got to drop it. You got to walk away from it. Maybe you could say that to those other creators. Once you present your evidence, about all this shit they've been posting, all these shorts and these videos and shit they've been posting. All you got to do is throw some shit, or not. You ain't even got to prove yourself. You ain't got to prove. You can just walk away from the shit yourself and let them just keep making innuendos. And if they talk themselves into a lawsuit, then that's on them. You can't stop that. If somebody talks themselves into a lawsuit, you can't stop it. Nobody can stop it. I could talk myself into a lawsuit sitting at motherfucking Walmart talking shit to somebody. I could talk myself into a lawsuit. Can't nobody stop that. You think somebody going to come on my channel? Jeff, do not go to Walmart and cuss out the lady in fucking home home and garden or whatever. Don't cuss her out. Like Whatever. Fuck that lady. So you can't tell somebody what to or what not to do just because they got a channel. So I'm one of those people that really believes, hey, if, if you want to talk about it, Pedro, hey, knock yourself out. You got a platform. You got a lot of people on your channel. You can discuss it with them. People on our channels can cross over and look at your shit, see what you're talking about on your video. You don't have to have any content creator on your video at all. And and you can't have a, a, you know, an invite that's disguised as an order, as a court order. You can't do that. An invite is an invite. An invite is, hey, man, you guys can come to my birthday party if you want to. Bring some of them old crusty-ass motherfucking donuts, Melvin. (laughs) Come to my birthday party, Melvin. Bring them crusty ass fucking donuts. You're invited. Cool, I'll be there, motherfucker. But you can't say, Melvin, you bring them crusty ass motherfucking donuts or else you're a fucking coward. You always better bring them crusty ass donuts on Sunday at three o'clock, motherfucker. And if you don't bring them crusty ass donuts, you can never have another fucking crusty donut in your life. You can't say that to somebody. That, that's kind of harsh. That's an order. That's a court order. 
That's not an invite. That's a court order. And when you check somebody's men mentality about that shit, you check somebody's soul about that shit, they sit back and they go, why would you say that? Like, why would you come at somebody like that? Telling us that we have to do something or else. If we don't as creators or else, we can't speak on it. We have to stop speaking on it. The discussion is over. We can I'm like, my discussion was an opinion. I can talk about my opinion every day for the next 365 days. As long as I'm not overreaching the boundaries of my opinion, it stays an opinion. My opinions can always be dissuaded by another opinion. Just like what Kev said. Kev said, Jeff, you always saying that they didn't do some, didn't help nobody with it. You saying they never gave it out to people. He fucking said, Kevin said it. And I said, damn, you're right, dog. You're right. You, like I said, I can't dispute that. Kevin's right. What can I say? No, motherfucker, I got proof, motherfucker. I, I don't. You probably did help 100 people, 200 people, 2,000 people, 3,000. Who the fuck knows? I don't know. But I said that you didn't. I said, I don't think he helped the community because he could have gave it to these people. He could have did that. He could have did all this shit. He could have gave it to everybody. Kevin's like, he probably did for all you know. My motherfucking car stopped quick as a motherfucker. And I like brakes. Kevin, you right. Holy shit. I didn't think about that. <laughs> so an opinion can be changed. An opinion can be changed with dialogue and open logic. <laughs> Amazing. Leave that before I go dry tonight. That's funny shit. That's funny shit. Cross ass fucking donuts. Fuck that shit. Thanks, Robert Rees. Hit the like buttons. Yeah, and I tell people all the time, man, that I'm one of those people that, yeah, he said, I never accuse him of anything ever. But I asked him a question for a different opinion. I'm a Exactly, M. That's what I'm saying. You should have a right. You should have a right to ask your opinion. You say, I have an opinion. I'm going to ask you a question based on my opinion. And somebody can say, you a clown. You can't walk outside and be like, man, I really think this weather is nice. This, My opinion is, this weather is nice. This is nice weather. Motherfucker looks at you like, man, you a fucking clown. How the fuck are you going to call me a clown just because I said the weather, the weather feels good to me. It feels nice outside. It feels good. I like this. You a fucking clown. <laughs> it's like, what do you think about the weather? You a fucking clown. Don't ask me about the weather. They go, okay. <laughs> it's like, you got a sponsorship with a company and never use the app. Plus makes it community posts about solo, but no response. But you have response to people on your community posts about GigCon. STL gigs, you're right. You're right. Hey, I, I can't tell you, man. These motherfuckers, a lot of times, sh people just, you got to understand that People have questions in the community. People have questions. And it's okay to have a question because when you're a content creator at the size he is, you're basically a public person. You're public now. You don't have a right to dodge motherfuckers. Well, you have the power to dodge motherfuckers, but you don't have the right to build yourself up in front of all these subs and all of these people and all these, build yourself up, build your business, build your community up. But a motherfucker walk in and be like, Hey, so what about this? Shut up, you fucking clown, and just shut down. That shit right there. That shit right there. He <laughs> said, tell her about out of these nuts. Exactly. That's where I saw that fucking these nuts at the goddamn Walmart anyways. Fuck that lady. <laughs> but yeah, but you respond to people, but you have a response to people on your community post about gig content. That's what throws me, STL gigs. That's the part that throws me a lot. People are picking and choosing the narrative, and it's cool. It's cool. You can pick and choose the narrative on your page if you want to. But if you begin the narrative, if you begin the narrative, you got to finish the narrative. And a lot of times, these guys have started the narrative of, we're going to do what we can do to help you earn more money. We're going to do what we can do for you to help you become a better driver, a more efficient driver, to take more money home to your family. We're going to do what we can do. But on the back end, they're doing something different. So Stanley Jenkins, my man, Memphis in the house, Frazier, West Side High right here, baby, Frazier High, shit. <laughs> but that's the thing, though, man. If, if you're going to begin a conversation about helping drivers, doing what you can do for drivers and everything else like that, you've got to follow up that combo. You can't just walk off and leave that shit hanging. You can't do that. That's, that's a hard fucking sell because people are looking up to you for answers. Because a lot of people that don't have answers, the first thing they do is go jump on YouTube. Man, how can I do these fucking breaks? Let a motherfucker jump on my channel. Go look at any of my mechanic repair channels. When I do something, 
of my videos. Look, when I do something and somebody asks me a question, I try to get to it because most likely they're in the garage right now. When the motherfucker's like, hey, man, I got this fucking bolt off right here, but there's is there a bolt on the back of it? And I go, yeah, you got to put a 10 millimeter back behind it because if you don't put the 10 millimeter back, it's going to keep spinning. I don't just leave that shit fucking hanging because somebody else, even if he doesn't see it, if he figures it out, if he figures it out and he says, oh, shit, it's spinning on the back. The next person may come to my channel with the exact same fucking issue and go, how did he resolve that? So even though my comment is late to the problem, my comment, his his question is in there. My response is under his question. How do you get that bolt off? There's a 10 millimeter on the back of it. Make sure you lock up the 10 millimeter so when you spin it, it doesn't keep spinning. I'm one of those people that see comments, especially if I don't get, all right, go hit the waist, Tony, man. Go hit the waist, Tony. Yeah, especially if I don't see people, if I don't see a comment, I don't get to it. But usually if I see a comment, I'm going to try to, because other people are looking at the channel too with the exact same problems. A lot of things, especially in ride share and delivery, we have the same recurring problems. How does my surge keep dropping off? Why do I keep getting fucking nature hikes when I'm in this area? How come they keep, somebody told me when I was on Lyft, when I was, I've been using Lyft for 2.7 years. I just found out two months ago, I've been using Lyft for 2.7 years. It says it on my app. I found out two fucking months ago that you can go into driving preferences, go to auto decline and turn that shit off or whatever, or auto accept and turn that shit off. I never knew that. 2.7 years driving Lyft. It took motherfuckers in the comments and text messaging me. Jeff, you know you can turn off that auto add to queue shit. How? Go into your driver preferences. It says auto accept. Turn that shit off. Never knew it. I thought Lyft was just like that. I was like, dude, I just thought Lyft was like this. They just added shit to your queue all the time. I just thought it was like that. Motherfuckers never told me because Lyft doesn't give you the playbook. Drivers on these channels give you the playbook. These comments give you the playbook. So I go chase down all these motherfucking comments. Exactly. Don't do major hype. I go chase on all these fucking comments and I find out the, the perfect strategies for driving in certain markets, especially my market, because Lyft will add shit to your motherfucking queue real fast. And I sit there and go, thank you guys for helping me in the chat because you're not just helping me, but there's somebody else in this driving community that is like, they keep adding shit to my queue. Somebody answered my question or gave me a fucking uh, comment. And now everybody else is seeing that comment going, that driver just helped me out. That driver just helped me out. That driver just helped me out. And they just keep going to that same driver's comment. 10 people be like, that driver just helped me out. Oh, hell. So Pedro telling people to pull up on his live right now. Oh, that's funny shit. That's funny shit. He love, he, see, that's what Pedro does. And, and I'll tell Pedro, like, I can, I can tell him tomorrow. I'm off tomorrow. Be on my live, one o'clock p.m., and he'll be like, "Motherfucker, I'll be driving. I'll be driving." What do you mean? You can't just fucking make a blanket statement and tell me to come on fucking to to Jay Watts Court, motherfucker. You ain't you ain't King Jay Watts. You ain't be the fucking Pedro Court, goddamn Jay Watts Court. Come to my court tomorrow at one o'clock, or have a warrant out for your fucking arrest, motherfucker. And that shit's funny as hell. Pedro don't need anybody on his channel. What Pedro can do. Is show everything that he feels can can prove that he has nothing to do with it. He can show that shit. All the videos are out there that apparently accuse him. Everybody's making these videos that are apparently accusing him. All he's got to do is say, these are my numbers. These are my rides. This is how many rides I did. This is how many rides I declined. This is how, I mean, I don't fucking know how it works. I use Solo. Solo tells me this. I use Power for this. Power tells me all this. He could just prove it like that. He don't have to have people. Like, he wants attention. To where all, because this is what happens when you're demonetized. And I'll tell you this is the real shit. I'll tell you this is real shit. YouTube is based on an algorithm of continuity. In order to stay relevant in the YouTube algorithm, by the time his ass get monetization back, he has to maintain his current level of activity on his channel. He's running.